Rural folk, what is the most creepy thing you've seen or experienced? Please make sure you support us by sharing and subscribing. Part 1. Account 1. I live in rural Wisconsin, surrounded by corn, marsh, the works. I remember I was in my teens, outside at dusk with my parents, but we were all doing our own thing. Suddenly a woman's voice yells, help me, from the woods beside our house. Just loud enough to hear, but quiet enough for me to second guess what I heard. My mom and dad both turned to look at me like, you heard that too, right? Mom starts screaming, do you need help? Where are you? It's moved from dusk to pitch black now, and the hair stood up on my neck because it got too quiet. Mom wanted to keep yelling, but Dad just got up from his chair and said, Inside, I think that's one of the only times I've seen her listen to him. Account 2. Dark, foggy early morning. Walking alone on an unpaved little road through some woods, I see something coming out of the fog. A grown man skipping like a little schoolgirl. When he sees me, he stops. I do not make eye contact. It was the janitor at my school. Account 3. My town is definitely starting to become more into the city type. But when I moved to the town, it was really rural. I used to live by the cemetery, and I always remembered that the cemetery smelled of rock. But I remembered that I used to walk around the cemetery when I was like 10 and sing happy birthday to the dead people. Because it had their birthday on the gravestone, I also used to pick flowers for the dead on their birthday and leave it on their grave. The weirdest experience I had was finding a dead squirrel on one of the graves, but in actuality, I was the weird thing about that town because I would spend my summer and weekends in the cemetery. Account 4. I was in northern Wisconsin with my family as a kid. While I was up there, I went on a little hike with my brother and dad. Just sort of going through some woods, ended up emerging from them onto someone's property, and the dude there saw us came up with his kid and asked the obvious, uh, what you doing on my property? My dad just apologized and said we were hiking and that he shouldn't have been so careless. We went back quickly and while the encounter was odd, it didn't feel tense or anything. My brother and I also learned a good lesson about respecting private property. However, dude we encountered was apparently not satisfied. I get it to some degree. If I lived outside an urban area, I'd be sus too if someone emerges from the forest onto my property. Things got weird, though. The guy we encountered actually got some goon who either worked for or was related to him to track us back to our cabin. About five minutes after we got back and started to make lunch, this goon literally waltz inside the cabin and begins to talk about how we were caught trespassing. He wasn't yelling or angry or anything, but it was still pretty jarring having some camo-wearing guy that you've never seen before to just barge into your grandparents' house. He didn't have a lot of time to say much because our grandparents owned a few guns. Mostly antiques, though. And sure enough, one got pulled on him. Our grandma held this guy up and actually apologized again for the prior instance of trespassing. Then she started to yell at him, though, for following us, trespassing on our property and straight up coming inside uninvited. And then he left. Was a really weird encounter. I've talked to my dad and brother about it on occasion, though, so it wasn't a dream or my imagination. Either way, don't trespass. That's the lesson I learned, Edit. A lot of people are speculating that we stumbled on drugs or something in TBH. I find that unlikely. The guy that talked to my dad gave his name. I certainly don't remember it. Though. And again, had his own son with him. I think it's more likely we pissed off someone who values property and privacy, and they overreacted greatly. Regardless, as others have noted, if you find yourself in a similar situation, remain polite, apologize, and get the fuck out. Account 5. The blood-curdling scream of something being killed by coyotes. Then all of a sudden it stops, and there's dead silence. Just a few weeks ago, just had a black snake wrapped on my outside doorknob when I opened it. I guess it was trying to get to the nest of flycatchers beneath the porch roof. Account 6. Australia has a reputation for scary animals, but people don't ever talk about the sounds you hear. The cutest, most fluffy, sweet-faced little animals make demon noises in the dark. Our birds scream, 
possum sound horror movie noises, koalas sound like giant monsters. All of these are completely harmless. Generally, the dangerous animals are, coincidentally, the ones you can't hear. Account 7. I've done a job for a few years now, noise monitoring, generally of coal monkeys, in rural areas, obviously. My first night on the job when I was 18, I was out by myself quietly listening to the mine from a dirt road near a farm property. Next minute I hear what sounds like a woman's scream over and over and over. Didn't really know what to do, but noted it down as screaming and fucked off. When my boss read my notes, he said, Oh yeah, there's an owl that sounds like that. A fucking owl indistinguishable from a human scream. Account 8. Used to live in rural Philippines in a tiny fishing village in Tinambacan. Right next to our house was a fenced, off lot that had been overgrown and a really broken down house. It always looked really creepy at night, and kids in the neighborhood told me it was haunted. From our rooftop, you could look into the lot. One night I was looking at it, and I saw a strange blue glow coming from inside, and shadows moving across the windows. I couldn't place it at all, and didn't hear any noise. No people speaking or any indication of what was causing it. Really scared me. I brought it up to my family, and they told me drag queens were squatting there overnight so that they could attend a nearby disco. So that was relieving. Account 9. A friend of mine lived in a semi-rural area growing up. One night the cops knocked on her door and warned her that they were looking for a possibly violent fugitive. Told her they'd check her property and that she should lock up and be wary. It wasn't until some time later that she found out the full story. The fugitive had been caught sexually assaulting a horse in a local stable. In the ensuing panic, the horse's leg was broken and the man got away. He was found, two days later, hiding in a stormwater drain. Account 10. Grew up in a very rural area of Kentucky, on a property that was about 75 combined acres of woods and empty fields, out a dead end, one lane road. One night when I was a kid, I was sent to take the trash out to the dumpster after dark. The dumpster was already at the bottom of the driveway. About the time I reached the dumpster, I heard the most blood-curdling scream I have ever heard. Like a woman was being brutally murdered right in my ear. I flew back to the house and had a full-on come apart, crying and telling my dad to get a gun. Fox screams will make your blood run cold. Account 11. Live out in the country, realize one night that we never got the mail that day, so I walked out to the road to get it. No moon that night, so it was pitch black, just the sound of crickets and tree frogs. As I'm walking back up the driveway, I hear my husband whistling from the direction it's coming from. It seems he walked out the back door and was coming around the side of the house towards me. I didn't know why and didn't bother to ask. I just went up on the porch and back in the front door. Just then, my husband came out of the bathroom. I still get freaked out a little when I think about it. It was 100. A human whistling a tune, and both humans were in the house. Account 12. Depending on the beholder, this is a ballsy or stupid story I can throw in the mix of all these close animal encounters on here. I lived out of a camper shell I built on the back of a small Japanese pickup I own. Did this with some breaks of couch surfing in between for about eight to five months, east to west coast and lots of places in between. I was doing some work on a guy's house in Sonora, California. He and his family were the coolest of Mormons. And they actually offered that I just park anywhere I like on their eight acres of property until we got their house finished up to be put on the market. Having a stable campsite, I changed things up and would sleep in my hammock beside my truck. Weather was perfect that time of year. The guy's wife saw me in my hammock on the first morning and made it a point to tell me about the two goats they had lost to a mountain lion the year prior. One day at dusk, while I was there, she and her son got a mountain lion walking up the driveway on video. It was bad. I knew the risk, but figured it's far too scared of human smells and lights and sounds to ever realistically mean problems for me, which is the case for 99 of those cats. Just be noisy before bed, and you're set. After lights out at night, I'd sit and browse the web for a while in the cab of my truck, and I could charge my electronics from the inverter I had in there. 
I wasn't done going in and out of the camper shell in the bed of my truck. So I had left both tailgate and hatch wide open. It was well into the night. I'm just reading away. And all of the sudden my entire truck lurches from a dip in the rear end. Something's in the back of my truck. I've shuttled people around back there, and I have a good sense of how the rear leaf springs do under weight in this truck because I've owned it for so long, and it was as if a slightly less than or equal to 200 pound man plopped his ass on my tailgate. Oh shit. First thought is, it's a person. Didn't think it at the time, but there is no way it's a person. I'm parked on crushed gravel that gives away the approach of anything putting body weight on it. Unless this person was being intentionally sneaky, but that gets thrown to the wind with the jump onto the tailgate. So it wasn't a dude. A useless wide-eyed check of my mirrors sent me thinking of a better plan. I'm not getting out of the cab. Manually lock both doors. Old truck. My keys are already on accessory to run charging. So less than an eighth of a turn of the key and the truck is running. I rev the thing in accordance with my heart rate, but I don't blast the horn because I don't want to wake this family and their five young kids up. Plan works, and the truck springs back up unweighted. The noise did scare the cat, but a mountain lion at night did pounce into the back of my truck. I shut the truck off and waited things out a good while. All clear. The ballsy, stupid part comes now. I was 21. This was my adventure I had dreamed about since I was a kid. I don't have wild behaviors. But I honestly feel all but dead inside until I face some kind of challenge or adversity and I'll come alive. Grew up watching too many movies or something. All my favorites share the common theme. Anyway, I didn't want to back down. Slight dehydration was on my side, and I knew my piss was going to smell a little stronger because of it. I pissed all over the trees my hammock was strapped to, and underneath and in a little sea bear circle around the hammock itself, and I did that every night for the next two weeks with no problem until we finished the job. It was ballsy then, but it's stupid now. The reality, though, is that anyone who sleeps outdoors in their habitat for any amount of days more than one out of the year has slept in a mountain lion's territory, likely under one. In terms of hillside, not trees, the consensus around them is that they see you, you don't see them. Could have told that story so much shorter. But it's true, and storytelling is a lot of fun. This ask turned into campfire stories quick. Account 13. My family lives in an old farmhouse surrounded by a lake, field, and forest. No neighbors nearby, no reason for outsiders being near. It's a dead-end road. This happened to my aunt when she was dog-sitting. She wakes up in the middle of the night to some notices. Our dog was less than helpful guard dog, and she didn't alert her at all. Aunt sees several people outside with flashlights walking around the yard. She panics and immediately puts on all the lights, and the people escape. She called the cops, but it would have taken them an hour to get there. Nothing was taken, but sure scared the hell out of my aunt. Account 14. My uncle used live way out in the country on a plot he said was a little less than eight acres. His closest neighbors weren't terribly far away, within quick driving distance, but also just far enough that walking wasn't very viable. Anyways, I spent my eighth grade summer there, and he had one story that scared the shit out of me back then. He had an array of animals on the farm, Three hunting dogs, pigeons, dozens of chickens, other various birds, a few goats, and a lone horse. And every night he would make his rounds through his farm just to make sure everybody was where they were supposed to be, and that everything was locked up. One night as he's walking back to his house, his dogs start going wild. He initially doesn't give care to it, and continues on his way, but his dogs are just relentlessly barking. He points his flashlight around and doesn't see anything. He gets to the back door of his house, his dog still barking. And so he turns around one last time, way out in his fields he says he does see what looks like a moving shadow. He automatically assumes it's a coyote or some other wild animal and just goes inside. The next night as he goes out to make his rounds, he said he was immediately stopped as he spotted some sort of shadowy figure just a little distance away from his barn. He didn't say anything, but he did take out his gun. Again, his initial thought was maybe a coyote trying to get his chickens. However, as he took a few steps, he said the figure suddenly stood up, almost human-like, and ran into the field, covered in darkness. He said he was so startled he just froze for a moment before yelling out, Hey! 
He didn't give chase to whatever or whoever it was. He did say that for about a week after. His dogs would go ballistic at night, but he never saw the figure again. When he was telling me the story, he said that it probably could have just been a transient, but I don't know. The dude lived in the middle of nowhere and had to drive like 40 minutes to shop. Seems incredibly bizarre for some random homeless to even be in that area. He said it could have also been a black bear, but I don't know either. He wasn't even close to the kind of area I would think black bears inhabit. Dude lived in a rural country farming area, not anywhere remotely close to mountains, forests, etc. Account 15. My grandparents' cottage is in Turkish Mediterranean region, and it lies in lemon and orange trees. We have two close neighbors and other settlements are quite far, and the two neighbors aren't present since it's summer, and they moved to uplands which is cooler. Now, the cottage is old, really old. It was built on a large rock, and it has no toilets inside. Toilet is about 20 meters outside in the south like Shrek's. Well, I had to use it in the middle of the night, and there is no light. I had to navigate using moonlight, and there's no light in the toilet either. You wouldn't know what's inside until your eyes gets used to the dark. When I was in, I heard footsteps or something crawling outside because dry grass was making noise. Whatever it is, approach to the door and stand there for solid 20 minutes. Now since where I stayed was way secluded, and the closest town was one hour of drive. And in the fields we have seen wild boars, snakes, and wild dogs too. I stayed in there for an hour after the animal left and rushed out to home, but my legs were asleep. I crawled until I could walk again. I was 12 or 13 at that time. Part 2 Account 1 My grandfather grew up on 80 acres in a rural area and said they found transients living in their woods all the time. Some would even walk up to the house to ask for food. He said most of them were people who would hop off a freight train when it stopped slowed down near the station a few miles away. Account 2. I had a black dog named Shadow. I let him out one night, then went back in to grab a jacket. I came back out and called him. I can just make out a big black shadow running from the far side of the yard. Figured it was him. I hear a noise to my left and look to see my dog coming around the corner. When I turn back, whatever was running across the yard to me is gone. Account 3. I live in a fairly rural part of NJ, surrounded by forest and hills. One night in high school, my friends and I were driving down one of the local back roads to find a place to chill and smoke. As we're driving, a deer jumps out in front of the car, as they normally do. This time, though, as we slowed down, the deer turned around back the way it came, walked up to a tree, and then proceeded to bash its head in on the tree in one hit and fall dead. It didn't run into the tree, it walked over and then slammed its head into it. It was the weirdest behavior we've ever seen. Could have been rabies, but was really freaky. Unsettled all of us, and we decided to go back and smoke at my friend's house. Also, Fox screams. Holy hell, does it sound like murder? Count four. Grew up spending a ton of time in the Colorado Rockies. In college, a friend and I were on a weekend backpacking trip up in National Forest Land, about 300 yards off trail. When we stumbled across a mostly buried bunker someone had made, think a 20-foot-long tough shed, buried up to its roof, we only noticed it because sun glinted off one of two small windows in the roof, which had been deliberately covered with brush, tree litter. Looking through the windows, we could make out a cot, buckets and tubs of food and supplies, etc. Found the door, concealed, partially buried, which had a heavy padlock securing it, noped out of there with a quickness, didn't want to run into whoever had built the place. Account 5. My brother and I were home alone watching TV. He had an inflatable, life-size, stone-cold wrestler in the basement. When you punched it, it would pop back up and say things like, because Stone Cold says so, so we're watching TV, and we know it's just us at home when suddenly we hear, because Stone Cold says, so coming from the basement, very creepy since the thing wouldn't talk on its own, something had to have moved it, and we were home alone. We both just looked at each other and ran downstairs to see what was happening. My dog had Stone Cold horizontal by the waist, and poor Stone Cold was rapidly deflating. 
water from the bottom weight dripping into the carpet like clear white blood. My dog's eyes were glazed over from the glory of the kill, and he'd periodically give Stone Cold another shake for good measure. You see, my brother had been chasing my dog with Stone Cold for about two weeks, and my dog was very afraid of this inflatable man. I only wish I'd seen him working up the nerve to approach and kill him. R.I.P. Inflatable Stone Cold. Count six. I used to live in the desert for a year. And on nights when the moon isn't out, or there are clouds blocking out the stars and moon, it's almost pitch black. You can't see more than ten yards ahead of you. One night I was driving down the highway going home. And then suddenly in my headlights I see a guy running on the side of the highway, full on, sprinting. I'm going 70 mionimetries, so it's only for a second or two, but I'm like, what the hell was he running from? I hope he's okay, because I'm not pulling over LMAO. But then maybe a minute later I see another guy in my headlights, only he's walking on the side of the highway, and I swear to God it looked like the same guy. Two separate guys in the dark, walking, running on the side of the highway. What possible reason could explain that? I didn't see any cars on the side of the road that might have broken down. I was so weirded out, I just had an uncomfortable feeling the entire ride home. Account 7. I lived way out in the country when I was 15 years old. So way out, it would take us an hour to the closest grocery store, and it would take the cops 45 minutes to get to our house, no neighbors close by. If something happened, no one would hear you scream. One night, I got a gut feeling in my stomach that something wasn't right. I ignored it and went to sleep, thinking it was just anxiety. Then, I wake up to a blood-curdling scream at two in the morning. I was absolutely terrified. These screams were demonic, switching between a high-pitched screech of a woman to a growl of a man. My entire family woke up, and my stepdad got his shotgun. My step? Dad went outside. Mind you, this is the country, and there are no street lights. It is pitch black other than the porch light above us. The screaming and screeching continues. It sounds like two people. My sister had gone out with her boyfriend earlier that day and still hadn't returned. Based off the screaming, my mom thought my sister was being murdered in the woods by her then boyfriend. My mom started screaming, Jason fake name. Jason, you let go of her. Get your hands off her. Where are you? Then it goes absolutely silent. We're so scared thinking she's dead and he's coming for us next. Then another noise begins, and it's the voice of a man, demon. He yells, I am Jacob. I am the son of God. I am chosen to find the baby. Only I can make this passage. Only I can find this baby in Valine. Now we're really scared thinking my sister's boyfriend is part of a cult and going to kill us all, my mom finally calls the police. All the while, this person is screeching and howling and creeping closer and closer to our house. After about 30 minutes of this, we finally see the outline of person in our field of vision, right next to our car. My stepdad shoots near, yells, don't you get any closer now. Person creeps closer, stepdad shoots closer. Now don't make me kill you, he yells. With that second shot, we hear the person run back up the woods, and we wait for the police to arrive. Finally, after 45 minutes, the police car comes through and shines light on the perpetrator. We cannot believe what we see. It is a skinny, completely naked, shaved headman crawling on all fours like a gorilla, or like Gollum from Lotar, if that's easier to picture. The police grab him, him screeching and howling the entire time. The cops didn't even come down to explain what was happening. They just took off, and we had to go back to sleep like nothing happened. The next day, we have to call the police to find out what happened and who this was. Apparently, this was one of our neighbors, who was a repeat drug offender. Our neighbor mixed a bunch of drugs together and tripped out a little too hard. It was actually unfortunate to hear he succumbed to his addictions a couple of years later. He was very young. This was a terrifying night. And for those that don't live in the country, this is the true horrors we have to face. Unemployment, drug and alcohol addictions, and domestic abuse. These issues can run rampant in rural areas, and I hope our areas will get better one day. TLDR, a demon. Man showed up screeching at our house in the country. He stated he was the son of God and came to find a baby. Police arrived. It was a man all tripped out on many different substances. We need to be more aware of the drug problem in rural areas. 
account eight. Yeah, never occurred to me before that a kingfisher's laughing would probably scare the shit out of a foreigner hearing it for the first time, especially if they're out in the bush alone. Should also add that the one of the most unexplained things that I've been told about is from my sister's fiancé. Said that him and his brother got chased by a Min Min light one night years ago when they were driving down to Brisbane from Blackwater. Said this light kept following them from behind a bit of a distance off. He said he then watched it go off into the bush next to the road and still kept on following them while darting around trees. So he starts yelling at his brother who was driving to get out of there as fast as possible. They were apparently booking it. And this light was still keeping up with them while darting around the trees and bush. Then it just starts getting further back and then disappears. I've never seen it personally, but he does seem a little shaken up by it. Ha ha. Account 9. Was out on a day trip with my parents. We had parked our car when a bird started to make a noise like an alarm. My father had a theory that since this was just by a hospital, the bird had learned to mimic an ambulance siren. Edit. This was in Scandinavia, so probably a passerine bird or a trush. Account 10. Okay. This is awful. So, trigger warnings. I still can't believe it all happened. From about age 8 to 11, my family lived in the woods up in Northern California. We were hippies, sort of. Combo hippie, rednecks. Also, I'm oldish. So when I was a kid, there was no cell phones or internet. There was no cable and we had no TV, or electricity for that matter. Kids would just hang out, for fun. And since this was the 70s, we were mostly unsupervised. One of the kids in the group I hung out with was a kid I knew as Dennis. He was a year older than me, and I liked him. I had my first tiny crush on him, actually. Goofy, quiet, but fun, interesting. He taught me to ride a dirt bike, and we used to go cruising around together, me on the back. One day we were riding around, and Dennis said he had to swing by his place to get something. I'd never been to his house, but my brother had, and he came back with stories about Dennis, dad being really creepy in a sexual way. He liked when Dennis brought his male friends over, but hated when girls came along. He'd give the boys pot and beer and show them porn. My brother was freaked out and didn't go there again. On this day, Dennis made me wait outside. He said Ken would be really angry if I came in. At the time, they lived in a trailer, sort of, in the middle of nowhere up a dirt road, with a tall wire fence and a dog in the yard outside that barked at me non-stop as I waited for Dennis. Ken stood at the window and stared at me with an angry, pouty look on his face. It was weird as hell. Dennis eventually came back out and we left. I tried talking to Dennis about his dad, but he shut down and would not discuss it at all. When I turned 12, we moved, and I lost touch with Dennis. Then when I was 14 or 15, my mom sat my brother and I down and said she had something to tell us. She said that the kid we knew as Dennis was actually named Stephen, that the man we thought was his father, Ken, had kidnapped Dennis when he was only seven years old. He'd told Dennis that his parents didn't want him anymore and had given him to Ken to raise. Dennis was heartbroken but believed it after a while, because what else could he do? He was only seven. Ken molested Dennis for seven years. I can't even think about it. It makes me so fucking angry. My friend lived in that hell, the prisoner of a sadistic child, dash, dash, dash. When Dennis was about 14 or so, he was getting too old to be sexually interesting to that psychopath, Ken, anymore. So Ken went out and kidnapped another little boy and brought him home. He dyed the kid's hair and told Stephen this was his new brother. The kid's name was Timmy White. Ken left Timmy with Stephen and went to work one evening. Stephen realized that this is what Ken had done to him, that his parents hadn't given him away, that Ken had kidnapped him, just as he did Timmy. He wanted to spare Timmy from the suffering he knew was coming, so he took Timmy and managed to hitchhike. Walk about 35 miles to the nearest sheriff station in Ukiah. He walked Timmy in and then Stephen left, figuring he had nowhere else to go, but a cop saw him, brought him in and talked to him. He said, I know my first name is Stephen, and Ken was arrested. Stephen saved Timmy and was a hero and an amazing person. 
Ken spent less time in prison than he'd held Stephen for. Because the prosecutor didn't bring rape charges to spare Stephen from having to testify about it. That always pissed me off. Ken spent so little time in prison and he was a dangerous fucking monster. He did eventually try to buy a little boy from his meals on Wheels Caretaker. She went to the police, wore a wire, and Ken was finally thrown in prison for life where he belonged. He's now dead, and I was fucking thrilled the day he died. The very, very, very weird postscript to this is that years later, when I was in my 30s, Stephen's older brother, Carrie, was arrested for the serial killings of four people, two women, two teenage girls. You may know about that case if you're into true crime. I still can't get my head around the fact that these things happened in one family, and that none of us had a clue what was happening to Stephen back when we all hung out. Uh, that? Fuck! I just looked up some news stories to check that I got details right about time, ages, and stuff, and I found out that when Ken kidnapped Timmy White, he paid a local kid with money and pot to help him, and the kid did it. He helped Ken kidnap Timmy, and that kid lived in a trailer on our fucking property for a while, and I knew him. His name was Sean Portman. He did some messed up stuff to me when I was maybe 10, which I won't get into. He lived there because my mom was always taking in stray troubled people and offered him the trailer for a while. Fucking hell. Account 11. One night I grabbed my son's toy night vision goggles to see if they even worked. If they did, maybe we could see what was making all the weird howling noises in the woods for the last two nights. So I looked across the yard into the woods and there were so many eyes. So many eyes. They were everywhere. In one case there was a grouping of three eyes. I had myself convinced it was just a possum with its baby and I couldn't see the other eye. But then they all blinked at the same time. I have never ever used night vision to look in the woods again. Whatever deformity was there can have its space. Count 12. Once while camping, I went for a very early morning hike to watch the sunrise from on top of a small mountain. My headlamp's batteries were nearly dead, so it was only casting a faint beam of light. For several miles, there were so many eyes glowing back at me from in the woods. It was on a small, decently inhabited island, so it was pretty well established that there were no predators on this island, just lots of deer, but it was still really fucking creepy. Account 13. Something else that happened in rural CO, this is my friend's story. Dress rehearsal for our school play would run a little late sometimes. My friend ended up being one of the last people there, she walked to her car and got in. Something in her rearview mirror caught her eye. She looked through her back window to see that a mountain lion was a few yards away. It wasn't the first instance of a mountain lion being on the school grounds. The middle school was just down the hill from there, and I remember when it locked down because there was a mountain lion outside. Good old nature, lol. Account 14. So a long time ago, I was at a friend's ranch-style house on a little bit of land, and it was time for me to head home. Walked outside, and it's close to midnight, but the moon is almost full, so it's really bright. I'm parked back in the sticks a little bit, so... Took me a second to get there, and as I near my truck, I hear like a low growl. Snort, and this beating of feet against the ground. Super loud, but not as loud as a horse, nor as steady just kept getting louder and louder. I get a little freaked out, so I run to my truck and fumble my keys, getting them out of my pocket, and they fall to the ground just like some horror movie. I bend over to grab them, and that's when I see something about as tall as my waist round the end of my pickup bed. I immediately knew it was a fucking werewolf, and that was it for me. So this beast just slams into me, knocks me to the ground, and jacked up my elbow. And that's how I met Cookie the Great Dane. Apparently, she belonged to an elderly couple about 40 acres over and would get bored and get out of the fence. I ran in to grab my friends and we played with her another hour before I headed home. Cookie become a staple around the ranch house and she always would wait for us when we pulled up. Side note, is it weird or has anyone else had interactions with unknown creatures and just thought, oh my god, that's a monster, I'm fucked for like just a split second? Seems like I have a bunch of those. Account 15. 
I showed up at a friend's house once, as I did almost every day after school. Like 13 years old, I rode my bike everywhere. I usually left it by the side of her pool in her backyard. But as I'm pulling up, she starts waving at me from her front porch. Her parents had gotten upset with us for leaving our bikes up there before, but neither of their cars is in the driveway, so I cruise up and we head inside. She immediately locks the door and calls 911. She had been up in her room looking for me to arrive, as she usually did apparently, and spotted a man lurking behind their pool. Very near where I usually dropped my bike, I was almost kidnapped or like anything, I don't know. The guy booked it when the cops arrived and they didn't find him. Part 3. Account 1. This is a horribly violent incident, read at your own risk. Not seen or experienced, I was at my village six or something months back. I don't live there, so I don't know anybody other than a couple of houses next to mine. One afternoon, we were supposed to clean the rice for a relative's wedding, and we had to supply the food to be cooked ourselves, and I was helping too. I understand the local dialect, though I can't speak it well enough. There were aunts, grandmas, sisters, and all the women available. They started gossiping about an incident happening in the house next to theirs. The incident was, a young girl, about 20, was so brutally beaten up by her own brother in front of a crowd of folks, not by hand, not by stick, but with a giant bed frame and something metal. Then he had pinned her to the ground in a chokehold until she was unconscious. Her mother was there, there were men, there were adults, Nobody did anything. She was later admitted to the hospital with broken ribs and a couple of severe injuries. All because she answered her brother rudely. Not exactly rude, but kind of back answered or said no to something he had demanded. I'm not sure. People didn't do anything, just watched the whole show and excused the monster by saying he was probably possessed, or he is not like that. I heard about this incident two days after it happened. When I talked to my grandma about it or asked her to file a complaint, she said... That is not our matter. We don't poke our noses in someone else's houses, no matter how criminally offensive it is. That was the most shocking thing I have ever heard. Account 2. My little brother and I were tossing a baseball around near dusk at the bottom of our property, 30 wooded mountain acres way in the middle of nowhere. It had gotten dark enough that we were just about to call it quits when we heard the single most horrifying scream we've ever heard, before or since, from the trees just beyond the edge of the clearing. Imagine a woman screaming in mortal agony, writhing in the most wretched torment imaginable. Every tortured scream from horror movies, war movies, anything you've ever heard, nothing compared to this. Even now, decades removed from hearing it, the hair on my arms and neck stands up just thinking of it. And it's made even worse by the realization of what it actually was, a mountain lion. Full-grown female mountain lions scream loudly when they're in heat, and it sounds like a human woman being torn to pieces by the devil himself. To hear that, two kids alone in the dark in the middle of nowhere was about as terrifying as it gets. Account 3. In total honesty, the creepiest thing I have seen is the droves of people from cities move here and completely disrespect nature. The selfishness of people who have disconnected from nature no longer belong. The littering, the legislation, the feeling like they are able to possess it, it's weird, and it's creepy. The next time you see a book telling you where you can find the best hot springs or the best trails that are off the beaten path, remember somebody is profiting off of something that they're sending people to in droves, and when you do that, it destroys it. The over-recreation of the rivers because people want to be a part of something is actually negatively impacting the fish the health of the riverbeds, and invasive species. It's really weird how somebody will be so focused on seeking their own joy that they're willing to destroy because rules can't possibly apply to them. Account 4. When I had just gotten my first car, I was driving home one night around 10 p.m. I came around a corner on a very dark back road, and my headlights shone onto a large stake that someone had set up on the curve with a deer's head shoved on top. I was nervous the rest of the way home after that. Account 5. I was walking home from my friend one evening. The path took me downhill through a forest. It was quite late, so it was really dark, but there was just enough moonlight shining through the trees that it was possible to walk on the path without a flashlight. Just as I was in about the middle of my path, 
I started hearing twigs snapping and dried leaves cracking under footsteps on my immediate right. I froze and looked to see if I could see anyone. Nobody was there. Then the grumbling became audible, like a big creature grumbling just to my right. It was loud and right next to me. I said a frightened hello, but the grumbling and cracking and snapping continued. I was scared shitless. I've never heard anything like that before. And to make things worse, there were warnings of brown bears in the nearby woods. I was trembling. I somehow pulled my phone out, turned on the flashlight, and shone it out in front of me. What I saw was nothing, but the grumbling continued. So I shone the flashlight down to the ground. That's when I saw it, a goddamn hedgehog. He was about a meter from me, burrowing for worms or God knows what. But the sounds it was making, it made it sound like it was a creature 100 times bigger. I wanted to punt that little fucker down into the valley. So yeah, that's the one time I almost shat my pants due to fear in the forest. Account 6. We had a big black feral cat hanging around our farm for a year or so. We'd see him far away, but he'd always run off. One day, he strolled right up to my wife, started rubbing on her leg and purring, drooling all over himself. He got pretty friendly for a week or so. One night, I heard an awful noise outside. It sounded like a pack of wolves howling. We have coyotes around here now, Western PA, but hadn't seen or heard them before this. I looked out the window, and the cat was just staring straight at me. He sat and stared for a minute, then ran away. We never saw him again. Scary, then cute story. A few years ago, I was out in my workshop and came into the house around midnight. I heard a weird screaming sound as I walked towards the house and thought it was a bird. We have some strange birds, including screech owls. They're only like eight inches tall, but make a loud scream like someone is being murdered. I went in the house and my wife asked, Did you hear that noise? It sounds like an animal in trouble or something. Okay, I got the flashlight and walked down the hill from the house, following this sound. It's getting more ragged and scary. It's pitch black, other than the feeble beam of my flashlight. It's getting louder. I got through the trees into the clearing that connects our fields, and the noise is coming out of the ground. I shone my dying flashlight down, and there's a sinkhole next to our disconnected septic tank where storm runoff has eroded the soil. Four feet deep in the hole is the tiniest newborn white-tailed deer fawn I've ever seen. She couldn't be more than a few hours old and is the size of a beagle. She is covered in mud and is bleeding her little head off. I reached in and scooped her out with one hand. Her eyes were packed with mud. She struggled weakly, then gave up. I carried her back to the house and carefully washed the mud off, gently rinsing her face until she could see again. I wrapped her in a towel and put her in a box on the porch so she could warm up and dry off. Around 4 a.m., I carried the box back down to the hole, sat it down, then put a huge rock over the hole. At seven, I went back down and she was gone. Later that evening, I was mowing the grass. Way down at the bottom of the field, a big doe emerged from the brush, followed by the tiny fawn. Mom had come back for her. I saw them on occasion all that summer. We have a lot of deer, so it's possible she's one of the adults now. I'm glad my wife didn't think it was a bird. Account seven. I live on a road very far away from town. I have neighbors, but I can't hear them or see them from my house. My back deck overlooks a field before miles of woods. One night I'm out back having a smoke and most likely stoned. I'm just chilling in the dark with a little bit of candlelight and the light from inside when I hear a sound that scared the hell out of me. It was a deep, low breathing, snorting sound. It came from the field, but it sounded like it was right next to me. It gave me chills and I thought there was a monster in my backyard. It's pitch black and I can't see what it is. Not that I really wanted to. I went back inside, locked the door, and googled the shit out of it. It was a deer. During their mating season, a male deer can make sounds like that. Account 8. Born and bred in the city, I have been living here my entire life. Just before COVID started, I thought it would be a fun idea to rent a cabin in the woods to completely disconnect from life and work. So I found a cabin with a beautiful deck, which was only accessible through a couple of back roads. I drove 45 minutes to an hour through the woods without seeing anyone. Anyway, the first evening goes great. I cook myself a nice dinner, have a couple of drinks, etc. It's snowing heavily, so I pour myself another glass, wrap myself in two thick blankets, and go outside on the deck to smoke a nice stogie. Let me tell you something. As someone who's used to city noise, the silence of the deep woods is terrifying. 
I couldn't see much except for trees, but it was as if the primal part of my brain switched on and ran on overdrive. I'm not superstitious at all, but I felt like every cell in my body was screaming, you're being watched. You might not be alone here. Go back inside where you're safe. Of course, nothing happened. And after the first week, I enjoyed the quietness. But still, you hear so many new sounds. You totally get why our ancestors believed in demons, banshees, wendigos. Account 9. I was raised hunting, so walking in the pitch black woods to my stand in the morning was pretty comfortable after a while. I knew the property well since I'd been in those woods since I was four and my dad would take me along. Given that, I didn't even use a headlamp on my walks back. Well, one morning I'm walking back, and suddenly there is this stomach-curdling scream ten yards away from me. It's pitch black, so I can't see what it is, but it sounds like what you'd expect a baby screaming while being murdered to sound like. Promptly got to my stand and pulled out the Google machine. Ever hear a red fox scream? If not, check it out. Account 10. Not rural in the burbs. But my parents' house is landlocked, which means it does not have direct access to the road. You have to go through someone else's property to access theirs. Currently, this is a parking lot that belongs to a park. My parents have kept their property natural, meaning they despise yard work, so they basically have a house in the middle of the woods next to a park. I was coming home one night a few years ago. It was dark between 10 and 11 p.m. I come around the corner to come up the driveway and immediately slam on the brakes. There was this tall thing coming out of the darkness right next to the driveway. It was moving. It was taller than my car and super skinny. I fucking thought Slender Man was coming for me. As I sat there in shock, my eyes adjusted. It was a blue heron, a big giant bird. It had come up from the creek at the park looking for food, I guess. Scared the hell out of me. Account 11. I saw a cougar in person once and it was terrifying. Probably less than 10 feet away. If you've never seen a cougar before, you're imagining it too small. They're just shy of eight feet long on average, and their whole body is muscle. Not muscle like a bull, mind you, but like a tightly coiled wire. Biggest, meanest looking animal I'd ever seen in the wild. And it was completely silent as it went past us. We just stood still for a good couple of minutes after it got out of sight. Account 12. I have always heard the saying, if you see a cougar, it has already decided not to attack you. I have lived in the Alaska backcountry and spent a lot of time around different species of bear. You learn pretty quickly that bears, for the most part, want nothing to do with you. Their behavior is pretty easy to learn, and you have an idea of what to expect with them in various scenarios. You can pretty easily see and hear them moving in most situations. Big cats still give me the fear, though. They are just too unpredictable and sneaky. Account 13. I live in the countryside. Recently, there are always dead dogs on my land. I am not sure if this is a coincidence or something else, but someone is killing healthy dogs and dumping the bodies just like that. It's not a great sight. The smell is really bad. The dogs look bloated and it looks like their eyes came out of the socket. Account 14. So I live in the city, but I'd call myself quite an accomplished outdoorsman when I can get away from city life. A few years ago, I loaded a bunch of camping gear onto my bicycle and spent the better part of the next seven months riding 5,300 miles, 8,500 kilometers around the U.S. At night, I most often preferred to wild camp, simply finding somewhere to disappear into the woods, somewhere people were unlikely to find me and even less likely to care that I was there. It ended up being one of my favorite parts of the whole trip, just finding some secluded spot in the woods to get some much-needed rest. But the forest, I quickly learned, is not a quiet place at night. There's always some form of noise. The chirping of thousands of crickets becomes a constant drone throughout the night, accompanied by many toads. There would always be at least a slight breeze through the trees or the babbling of a nearby creek. It was always a highlight of my nights, though not particularly uncommon to hear the distant yips and howls of coyotes, and I fondly look back on the one night when two owls, one on either end of my tent, called back and forth through much of the night. After a month or so of this, I became quite accustomed to the nighttime sounds of the forest, and it became very comforting. So it was quite a shock to my system when one night in rural Montana, I realized I was struggling to sleep because of the exact opposite of what keeps most people up. That night, it wasn't the noise that was keeping me awake, 
but rather the complete lack of any noise. It was dead silent, and that was an incredibly unnerving experience. I can only describe it as the loudest silence I've ever heard. It almost felt as if the entire forest was hiding from an equally silent predator. Suddenly, the occasional snapping of a twig, a common sound that would normally get lost in the cacophony of the forest, sounded like a gunshot. I slept terribly that night, and morning could not come soon enough. Account 15. I had just turned 16 and was driving home in the middle of nowhere at night on a back road that had trees on both sides. At one part in the road, the tree line on the left side briefly clears. When I got to that part of the road, I saw five large, almost perfect circles of fiery, yellowish-orange light high in the sky just hovering. Two were close to each other, more to the left, and the other three were aligned more to the right. But all were relatively close. No movement from them, no sound, nothing. Again, these were large, glowing circles. They looked nothing like the dot of light you'd see from an aircraft or anything. After about 15 seconds of driving, the tree line got dense again so the sky was once again blocked from my view. I was about 30 seconds from the end of the road, and as I reached the end and the trees cleared again, I had about another 10 seconds worth of viewing the mysterious lights before they got slightly brighter and then disappeared pretty much instantly and simultaneously. To this day, I still have no idea what I saw. Again, this was in the middle of nowhere, hours from any major city. No known military facilities or government entities or anything like that nearby. I've rattled my brain on every logical theory possible. Fireworks, missile tests, meteors, military, aircraft, etc. None of them make sense. The whole experience was so eerie and the fact that it's still unexplained weirds me out to this day. Part 4. Account 1. Behind my house were miles of woods until they chopped it down for a neighborhood. Twenty feet behind my house is a steep drop-off or a mild cliff into a valley with a creek in it. Very steep on both sides, so this valley has been left as forest in between neighborhoods. When I was little, we saw all kinds of wildlife in our yard. We stopped seeing turkeys completely and saw fewer deer after the new neighborhood was built. There were tons of rabies cases, too, until the bigger animals stopped coming around. This is all backstory. I only let one dog out to pee in the backyard on a leash because she can escape anything given time, while the other is chained to a runner that runs the length of the yard. She is a good girl and does not need supervision. At night, it has always been creepy to walk out to the edge of the woods just so the dog can pee. Last summer, my sister and I kept hearing something over the hill and felt like we were being watched. The motion sensor light in our yard was always on by the time we went outside. We both thought we were being paranoid, so we did not tell each other our thoughts. Eventually, I broke down and told her we were being watched from over the hill, and she said she felt the same way. We both agreed the presence felt negative and angry. We started taking the dogs out with bats, knives, and pepper spray. We could not figure out what was watching us. Whatever it was got bolder and bolder. We started to hear it more frequently. By the way it sounded, we both estimated its size as at least that of a large dog. Sometimes we heard a grunt or two. This only happened at night. The dogs would silently whip their heads towards the sounds and just watch. Normally they bark at that kind of stuff. I was glad, though, because one dog is 12 and needs a leg brace to walk, while the escaping one is a chihuahua mix, so if they started a fight, they would lose. This went on for weeks. We started feeling like we were being watched in the daytime, too. We even started hearing sounds during the day. We never once thought this presence felt human. There are coyotes in the area. There are bears, too, but they are so rare they make the news when sighted. Mountain lions are extinct in my area, so it was possible that some found their way back to this territory, but it was unlikely. One day, I am letting the dogs out, but I am not too on guard as daytime visits were still much rarer. Then I hear a large object moving through the brush and a grunt. My stomach drops. That was the closest I ever heard it. I pick up my dog as slowly as possible and start to turn towards the house to evacuate when I catch sight of a herd of five or six deer on the cliff staring me down. They look downright murderous. I have seen deer my whole life, but I never saw one look so angry. It had been in the news a year before that a single deer killed someone nearby. They were dumb and did not respect the deer's face. My house was stalked by a herd of deer for weeks. My family throws expired produce out of the back door over the cliff. The yard is shallow, and you can make the throw from inside to avoid compostable materials sitting in a landfill. That is why the deer were hanging out. 
We had a buffet for them. We stopped that real quick, and they only hung around for a few more days. It might sound dumb that we never put this behavior together with the visitor, but we had done that our whole lives and forgot about it the moment it was launched over the hill. The end result was pretty funny, but the buildup was creepy. To summarize, my sister and I felt like we were being stalked by an animal every night. After weeks of the stalker getting bolder and closer, we realized it was just an angry herd of deer. Account 2. The first time I heard a baby rabbit scream as it was taken by a fox, I could have sworn that it was someone getting attacked. Anyway, my dad has a story about those owls. He was in his 20s in the early 70s and was staying at a married friend's place so they could do some rabbit shooting. They were in the country. In the middle of the night, my dad suddenly wakes up to the sound of a woman screaming. He jumps out of bed and finds the dude and his wife already standing in the living room in their pajamas and nightdress looking worried. Then they all hear it again. He describes it like a horror movie scream. They are all convinced that someone is out there in the middle of Fleurieu Peninsula getting straight up murdered. And they hear it again. So dad and his friend grab their rifles, tell the wife to lock the doors behind them, and they head out. They are going to save this lady from whatever fate is befalling her. It is a clear night, and the moon is near full. They are walking further and further away from the house, and they are intermittently hearing this scream. But they cannot pinpoint exactly where it is coming from because there is a bit of a breeze. They have been out there for a while. The scream, as though someone is getting stabbed, tortured, or mutilated, is wearing them out, and they are getting jittery. How could this go on so long? How is she still alive? Is she still alive? They have started convincing themselves that something supernatural is going on. They turn around to go back to the house and call the cops. As they turn around, they hear the scream from right above them. And there, standing in the moonlight, is a woman in a long nightgown, which is fluttering in the breeze. She reaches out to them. So, Dad's skeleton tries to exit his body and his friend had his rifle to his shoulder before he realized that his wife had gotten worried and followed them out. And that is the story of the screaming owl, and how two dudes came close to shooting a woman while trying to save an imaginary one. Account 3. When my brother and I were kids in the 7 to 9 age range, there was an abandoned house we would poke around near occasionally. This was in the 90s, so still in the Wild West childhood territory. One day, we were brave enough to knock on the root cellar door. I will never forget the immediate sharp bangs on the door back at us. I do not think either of us have run that fast since. Account 4. I was driving home not so long ago from work in the pitch black, and my usual route was blocked by a cop car, so I turned around and went down a country lane with no street lights. I had crawled out of work, so I needed to pee, but it was only 25 minutes to home, so I thought it would be fine. Driving 10 miles an hour down this lane, I had never driven down. With ditches on either side, it felt like a scene straight out of a horror film. My neck started prickling. Something was watching me, and it was close. I ignored it because I am 37 and really brave, until I could not ignore it anymore. I looked out the window into the eyes of what seemed like the devil that opened its mouth and made a god-awful noise. I screamed, nearly wet myself, and then realized it was a field full of sheep. Another time, around midnight, I heard something rustling around my garden. I lived in a bungalow at the time, so I looked out the window thinking the rabbit had let herself out of the hutch until she started thumping at something that had disturbed her. I could not see anything at first. Then two bright yellow eyes and jaws of death opened at me. I fell off the bed squealing and actually did pee a little that time. It turned out to be one of my jet black cats that had snuck out when I had gone for my bedtime cigarette. She wanted to come back in, Animals will be the death of me. Account 5. I used to live in a town with 212 people in it. Very rural. People hunted in their backyards. Three stories. I heard my ex-husband's dog losing his mind outside. He never acted like that. And since it was around midnight, it was even scarier. My ex-husband worked third shift, so it was on me to figure out what was going on. I mean, it was our dog, you know, and I did not want anything to happen to him. I walked outside with a flashlight, and a freaking bear came around the corner of our shed. This thing was only about 200 feet from me. Maybe that is not close to you. But as a 21-year-old woman with a flashlight living in a trailer made of basically aluminum foil, I freaked right out. 
My second Christmas, living in that trailer, I got a phone call one night from the local prison that there had been an escape, and it was thought the prisoner was heading into our area. Be alert. Do not answer your door. Do not go outside. Call the cops about anything suspicious, etc. At first I thought it was a prank call, but I talked to some neighbors and they had all received the same call. I looked it up and yup, it was real. I did not sleep that night. My ex-husband's car did not start, so I had to take him to work that night. He worked at a 24-7 grocery store, so I did some grocery shopping while I was there. When I got home, I went to the front door to take groceries in, stopping a neighborhood dog from coming in the door with me. I closed the door, locked it, and started putting groceries away when I heard a scratching noise in the living room. I checked it out, and there was the same dog I blocked from getting in. I thought maybe our crappy trailer had a hole in the wall for a second. So I stared at the dog for a few seconds, trying to think of what to do, when I heard the back door, which was always locked, slam. Truly freaked out now, I grabbed a kitchen knife and went to check it out. The door was wide open with the wind slamming it into the outside wall. I closed it and called my ex, who said I was fine and that it was probably just a loose lock, etc. He basically brushed it off, hence one of many reasons he is my ex. When we looked at it the next morning, someone had nearly broken the doorknob off on the outside. Yup, someone had tried to break in and possibly had already been there when I got home. It scared the daylights out of me. Account 6. God, that last one reminded me of the time someone tried to break into our house through the back door. It was a duplex-style house with multiple apartments, and ours was basically on the second story, level with the street. But the street was on a hill, so the backyard was basically a whole floor lower. Our back door had a tiny porch with creaky stairs leading to it. In the middle of the night, around 11 p.m., we just heard this super loud bang from the back door. I ran to the door and heard loud steps running down the stairs and the screen door creaking closed. I refused to sleep that night. Account 7, Rural Ohio. I went to visit a buddy, D, who moved a couple of hours away to another small town. I had another buddy, B, go with me. D takes B and me to meet a new friend of his. We will get to his designation in a minute. The dude opens the door, greets us, and seems normal for about five seconds. He was shirtless, but that is pretty common out here. Then the dude turns around as he waves us in, revealing a massive swastika tattoo across his entire back, colored in with Confederate flag colors and patterns. At this moment, B and I locked eyes, and we knew what each other was thinking. Our lives might be in danger. So we follow this guy, a literal Nazi, through the house because we do not want to be rude. We noticed that the carpet was supposed to be white, but it was more of a brown with a slight red tint to it. The place was a bit of a mess. We walked past his bathroom where his 14-year-old younger sister, who we were all 19, was using the toilet with the door open and attempted to greet us mid-act. At this point, B and I were massively uncomfortable and a little creeped out by everything and everyone under this roof. Finally, we get to the dude's room, and it was then when B and I looked at each other, and we were both sweating profusely with fear in our eyes. There were guns everywhere. There had to have been at least 30 guns all over his room, stored improperly. We noticed a couple with the safeties off. Horn posters were all over his walls, and of course there was some Nazi memorabilia. B called my cell from his pocket, to which I answered pretending it was my sister, and I acted as if a family emergency was happening and pretended to be distressed. I said I was sorry, but we needed to get back to town. We agreed to never visit D again. I do not know if this constitutes as creepy or horrifying, but to me, it started off creepy and got horrifying later on. Account 8. I live in the countryside in the UK, just about as far away from any city or town as you can get. It's all very flat farmland. I go for a lot of walks through all the fields. Last summer, I went for a long walk and was about three miles from my house. It was super hot that day, around 33 degree, 91 degree. I was walking past this one field that was full of crops ready to harvest. I had no idea what kind of crop it was, but it was about waist high, bright yellow, and looked amazing. So I stopped and got out my phone to take some pictures. I stood there for about five minutes, messing around, trying to get some cool pics and videos for Instagram. Then I carried on walking. About 30 seconds later, I looked back across the field and saw what looked like a person dressed in black standing in the middle of this field of yellow. At first, 
I thought it was a scarecrow that I just didn't notice when taking those pictures, as maybe it had blended in with the trees in the distance behind this field. I got my phone out and was looking through the pictures, zooming in and trying to see if I could spot this scarecrow. Of course I couldn't. I kept walking with this field to my right and took a right turn with the field still to my right. What I thought was a scarecrow started walking. So now this figure was a person, a person dressed in all black on this really hot summer's day, hot for the UK, LOL. They started walking towards the spot I had originally stopped at to take pictures, and eventually got there and just stood there themselves. I kept walking until I was far away enough that I couldn't see them anymore. It just freaked me out, as there was no reason for someone to be walking through this field. Only the farmers ever do it as it was full of crops. I was walking on the tractor roads in between each field. Part of me thinks this person had to have been lying down in this field while I was taking the pictures, as there was no way they got to the middle of the field in the 30 seconds I looked away. I couldn't tell if they were looking at me, but I really feel like they were, as they just stood there. I don't know, it was just a weird thing to see, considering I was three miles from the nearest house with no other people nearby. I've never seen a single person just randomly walking through a farmer's field before or since then. Just felt like a scene from Jeepers Creepers. Account 9. A mountain lion stalking me in the woods on a midnight hike. I turned my flashlight on and it scared it away. And my brother shot a round of his 45 into the ground about six feet away. Then we went home paranoid to death. There's an old trick that people in India do. They have a mask that looks like a face with big eyes. And they wear it backwards with the mask part on the back of their heads. That way, anything behind you thinks you are looking at it. It's meant to protect against tigers stalking you. Account 10. I was in western Washington hiking on a forestry road. It was May-ish time frame with snow still in patches as it was about 6,000 feet elevation. Walking along, beautiful day, by myself, and all of a sudden I got one of the coldest chills I've ever had in my life. You know the feeling. Chicken skin, a feeling of WTF, and fear of the unknown. I walked a bit further, and as I approached a patch of snow, there were a set of very large mountain lion prints. They were pretty fresh, but walking the same way as me. I walked back to my car, walking backwards. It was maybe 200, 250 yards to my car. I walked the whole way back backwards so he, she couldn't sneak up on me. I know it was watching me. I never went up there again without at least another person. Account 11. I grew up in the hills out in the country. We own a ton of land, including a ridge and a large hill. One day, me and my cousins were deep in the woods and walked up on an old bloody white shirt hanging off a tree. We thought it may have been from hunting because it almost looked like a rag. But we looked around more and found a pair of shoes, then a pair of socks, shorts, and underwear in an old freezer bag covered in mold and dirt. It looked like petite women's clothing. We got our uncles out there, and they blew it off until they saw it. They left it where we found it and told us to stay out of the woods for a while. No one really talked about it after. Looking back, that seems extremely suspicious. Account 12. We were off-roading a couple of years ago near the Canadian border. We followed some power lines for a ways when we decided to stop and check out a giant bird's nest atop one of the junctions. We heard a noise behind us and noticed a group of ATV riders on the next hill behind us. Not unusual for that area, but what was unusual was the guns strapped to their backs. Not hunting rifles, machine gun style, and they were staring back with binoculars. We jumped back in the jeep and started to head back to our family cabin. We checked back, and yes, they were following us and trying to catch up. The kid driving just nailed it. Our cell phones were useless up there. We had no protection, only speed on our side. We sped down dirt roads that had never been maintained and somehow managed to get the jeep parked far enough in our driveway and pulled enough brush in front to cover it and hit ourselves. When they roared past, we noticed they were all dressed in green, covered in weird insignia patches that we didn't recognize, and carrying guns like they were ready for some intense combat. No idea what they were doing or training for. Account 13. Late to the party? But here it goes. I'm not from a super rural part of my country, but it's still just villages with a few dozen houses and then like a one kilometer stretch of road between them. Anyway, me and my cousin were about 16, 18, and we were just standing on the road in front of my house. It was like 3 a.m. and it was winter. We were just going home from God knows where, and my house was first up, so we usually chatted for a while before I went in. 
Also important here, we were stone cold sober. Suddenly there is this weird sound in the distance, which was even weirder since snow usually deadens all sounds. It was like this high-pitched regular beating thing. Kind of like a seagull cry, but regular, like unnaturally regular, like a squeaky car or drill bit. And it started coming closer and closer, but not directly at us. It was getting louder and louder, to the point of being almost uncomfortably loud. It sounded like it flew above my house, about 50 minutes away from us. And then it started moving away until it just faded out. We couldn't see anything because while there are street lights there, they are the kind that reduce light pollution. So basically everything behind the light is like a black wall. Now we were pretty freaked out and I told him he can crash at my place since he had a 20 minute walk ahead of him. He didn't want to, but we still stood there and just nervously talked about what it could have been. It could have been a bird, but it's no bird I have ever heard. And it was during pitch black night during the winter. It couldn't have been a seagull since we don't live anywhere near water, so even river seagulls don't exist here. And it couldn't have been a hawk, since I know how hawks sound like since they nest right above my house. As we are standing there all weirded out, a car rolls up and a guy comes out. It's a civilian car, and the guy is like mid-40s. He pulls out a badge. Apparently, he is a detective at the local police station. He wants to see our ID cards and writes our info down into his notepad, which I noticed had several people on there, but I couldn't make out anything fast enough. He is acting all shady, asking what we are doing there, and if we saw any weird stuff, and we just say no, because we were kids, and we aren't going to go telling a policeman that we heard an alien robot bird. So he leaves after a while in the direction of the alien robot bird sound. And after another half an hour, my cousin was brave enough to go home. And that was it. It's been over a decade since then, but a few months ago we were talking with friends and we started reminiscing about this night. Turns out we weren't the only ones to hear it. A few friends that live in the general direction it moved towards also claim to have heard it, and one said he also got his info taken by the police. Apparently it wasn't a single event as well, and that it went on for a period of time that year, and then it stopped. So we still have absolutely no idea what it was, but the whole situation seems really weird. I like to believe it was an alien robot bird, though. Account 14. My grandparents live in a very rural part of Romania. So rural, we didn't get flushing toilets till like 2007. My parents were born there and I was raised as a child there, so English isn't my first language. Sorry for any mistakes. My family isn't very superstitious. We rely on more common sense more than anything. So when I would go out to see my friends in the village, I would be told to... Try not to come home too late. There are a lot of dangerous dogs around. I pride myself on not being afraid of normal or day-to-day -day things, e.g. a dog, so I would kind of just wave those warnings off. Summer of 2017, I was 16 years old and visiting my grandparents for the summer. It was a very hot day, and everyone stayed out later in the village park than usual, maybe till around 2 a.m. The way back home is either I could use the main road and go down my pathway home, or cut across the school grounds and shave two minutes of my walk home, getting there in seven minutes instead of a whopping nine. I used the shortcut. In the summer, the school grounds can sometimes be used to store lumber piles. Obviously, there's no one there to use the school. Why not make the most of it? Well, that summer, the neighbors facing the school were building or fixing something, I think their barn. So there were several large piles of wood creating a weird zigzag enclosure thing. Sorry, I can't explain it any better. Anyways, in the daytime, it's no problem finding your way out. But in a village in Romania where not all the streetlights are working and no tall buildings illuminating the area, it's like being a mouse in a maze. But you're also blind. I was midway, trying to figure out whether I should just hop the school fence, if I could find it, or try to work out how to cut through the piles to get on the green to go home. I don't know how else to describe it, but suddenly everything got very, very still. There wasn't a breeze. Usually there's crickets, frogs, dogs barking, etc. Everything went quiet. My hair started going up on end. It just felt wrong. There was a huge urge to turn around. I did. In the path I took across the school grounds was the biggest fucking hound I'd ever seen. It was the size of a small pony. It looked unnatural. It was a light color with darker snout and paws. I didn't even hear it coming. I should have. All of our village dogs are loud, small to mid-size and dumb as rocks. They bark at anything, but this thing just didn't. I started sweating really bad and I got that ball of fear in your stomach that you get. It wasn't moving. 
just staring straight at me. What did I do? I turned around, clenched my butt cheeks, and walked home. Granted, it was an extremely uncomfortable walk home, but I did it, and I survived. I asked my grandmother about it the next day. She got a very worried look and said she had no idea. Our shepherds don't use huge dogs anymore, and they're usually chained to the ground. I don't take that pathway home anymore. Account 15. I live in a home kill farm growing up. We farmed animals for slaughter and slaughtered them ourselves to order. Now this isn't creepy or weird for me and my family, but sure was for the people who got lost and came up the drive asking for directions. My dad, my granddad had a large order to fill. He had about 10 dead and skinned sheep in the shed and was about to the start the next. Standing over a sheep with a sharp knife, with me as an eight-year-old moving the sheep guts out of the way when people come up the drive to ask for directions. We were both covered in blood. Reckon it scared them pretty good, but was just another day for us. Part 5. Account 1. My grandparents had an acreage when we were kids, with a cabin he had built way in the back as a sort of getaway spot for his grandchildren. It was a really nice secluded spot that looked over a field and took about five minutes to get on quad. On the summer of their 50th wedding anniversary, they had all their friends over, a group of people that spanned from all over North America to celebrate. Most of them had kids or grandkids who were around my age, 18 at the time, so we all stayed out in the cabin. It was a perfect location to party, smoke, and get into trouble for some rural punk kids. There were maybe seven or eight of us in total. Anyway, my one buddy and I stepped out for a smoke, and it was fairly dark. This is in southern Manitoba, where around this time of the year it's not fully dark until about 11.30 p.m. I had a flashlight on me and was just generally messing around till I shined it to the left of me just off the porch. Bunch of eyes in the dark, coyotes. My buddy and I were both 200 LBs, 6'2 guys, so I wasn't too concerned, but we knew they were there. We went back in. Both of us had dealt with coyotes before, so this was nothing new. But it always kind of made me uneasy, knowing a bunch of scavenging predators were lurking around. An hour or so later, we go back out for another smoke and think, Hey, I wonder if the coyotes are still out there. Check again. Holy shit, yes they are, but now they are in the field, in front of the cabin, and to the right side as well. We go back in and close the door, turn off the lights. We shine a light out the window, and they're practically right there. As far as I could tell, the whole cabin was basically surrounded by the fuckers. We ended up calling it for the night, but the majority of us couldn't fit in the loft upstairs, so some of us slept downstairs. My buddy and I slept on the floor almost in front of the door, and you could hear the fuckers literally pacing on the front step outside the cabin. Lots of yipping, too. Nothing really happened beyond that, and I'm sure they eventually moved on. Come morning, there were paw prints everywhere. I'm sure in retrospect, it was just a pack of coyotes curious as hell as to why there was a bunch of light and noise coming from a building that was usually abandoned. But good God, was it an unnerving night. Account 2. I have a lot of creepy stories in the woods of Spain and near my granddad's village. Some normal, some paranormal. As the threat is serious, I will stick to the normal ones. After a day of hiking, I started returning home almost dark but we have a clear path marked with stones that reflect light as markers. Halfway there, the foxes had no better thing to do than start mating, so the woods were covered in what sounded like women being murdered. Suddenly everything became quiet, which normally indicates that wolves or bears are hunting. I stopped to drink a bit, as they tend to avoid people, and even if they see you, they don't care most of the time. When suddenly I noticed the breath of something almost touching my neck, I was so scared only thinking that I was stupid, and I just found the only man-eating bear in the country. I slowly turned to see it and stopped seeing my back, and there I saw it. A big adult bear sniffing at me. Thankfully, once it stopped sniffing, it went back into the dense woods. It was scary as fuck, I was probably safe as in swimming with sharks, but the creepiest thing is how a 200 kilo being sneaked on me with that ease. Account 3 I was getting over a two-year relationship breakup and drove out east into the country. My plan was to sit quietly away from the light pollution of the city and take in a grand star's cape in the dark, just to chill out. Well, a moment after I found a spot to park up at on the north side of the road on a grassy patch, shut off my car, the weirdest, creepiest thing to ever happen to me yet takes place. I rolled down the window and looked up at the sky in anticipation of a beautiful, clear night's starry vista. 
when all of a sudden the rear of my car feels like something is grabbing onto it and shaking the whole vehicle. I put the keys back into the ignition and fired her up and frantically rolled up my window. Before I drove away, I remember stopping for half a second and second guessing, wondering if it had just been a ground tremor or something innocuous. But the feeling in my gut, like when you're in the presence of something supernatural and malevolent, was sharp. So I drove away with the quick, quick. I've told a few people who were interested about it, but this is the first time I've felt I could post it. Account 4. When I worked on farms, I went for a sunset ride down a very isolated road in the country. Me and my horse were just heading back when she stops, her eyes go wide, and she is looking into the wooded path next to us. I encourage her on, but when we move, something in the tree line moves with us, and when we stop, it stops. I am trying not to freak out at this point because the horse would freak out too, but I ended up getting her into a canter all the way home because she wouldn't walk. Account 5. I was driving home from the city one night at about 11.30 p.m. and decided to take a shortcut through the back roads to save some time. About halfway home I checked my fuel and it was reading less than a quarter tank. I think to myself, wait a second, alone, late at night, country back roads, running out of fuel, Am I in a horror movie? And no shit. The second I finish the thought, the first splashes of rain start hitting my windscreen, to which I actually said out loud, well that's ominously conclusive. I laughed at getting the horror cliche bingo and continued home. Account 6. I'm from a small town in Appalachia, and my grandpa lived out in the relative boonies. I was home from college once in mid-autumn and went down to visit him. Ended up staying a while, and it was dark by the time I was going to take off and head back to Mom's house. He walked me to the back door that had a little 8, 8, 10 or so porch off of it, and a set of stairs straight down to a concrete stoop with a single bulb outside light fixture that threw just enough light to see by. The driveway was probably 15 yards away, and since I had parked behind his car, it was maybe a total of 20 yards to my Jeep, 15 more beyond that to the woods. As soon as I hit the bottom step and took about two steps forward, something stopped me cold. It was almost a physical sensation. I took a look behind me and Grandpa had stepped out on the porch with his by-the-door shotgun pointed in the same general direction. I backed up the steps and he covered me until I got to the door and we shut and bolted it. I called Ma and said I was just going to stay the night since it was late already. We sat up for hours trying to figure out what had tripped both of our oh-shit meters at the same time but could never come up with a satisfactory answer. Neither of us consciously saw or heard anything out of the ordinary, and neither are the type to get easily freaked out. He was a Wubby Y2 Marine who fought all over the Pacific, and I'd been hunting and camping with him since I could walk. He said the only other time he'd had that feeling was during the war on Iwo Jima, before either a late-night Banzai charge or just before a sniper up in a palm tree took a shot. Account 7. Not too rural, but rural suburbs here. I'm still sitting here on my couch, post-witnessing a break-in attempt into my own home. I have a weird downstairs neighbor. I rent about two-thirds of the house, but there is a small ground-floor unit that's rented out to an older lady. She seemed perfectly nice at first, just old, a bit cooky and bored. Then we've received the news that she's been watching us, listening to us closely, and reporting everything back to the old tenant who is an extremely toxic, shitty person. Why? For something to do, I guess. We've had multiple problems with her since moving in less than a month ago. Violent fighting with her ex to the point we had to call the police to go check on her, reporting everything we do to the previous tenant, ringing and banging on my door relentlessly when the mail comes so I can come get mine. Like, yeah, I know the mail is there. Calling and texting multiple times a day to ask to borrow money for cigarettes. Smoking inside to the point I've had to use inhalers and allergy meds. A lot of shit. Yes, it's been reported to the landlord. They are looking for a reason to throw her out because she's been causing too much shit. Last night, she texted asking to borrow money for smokes. I didn't even reply, since she bugged me before, and the answer is still no. Then she called and hung up like three, five times. Still no. This morning around 8 a.m., banging, doorbell ringing, some more banging from her. Then swearing up and down how that lazy cunt sleeps all day, this will for sure show her. 30 seconds later, heavy running steps up the stairs to my back door. I come out to see what it is, 
She's got a full toolbox next to her on my patio, trying to use whatever to break my screen and then patio door lock so she can come in and steal whatever. When I catch her in the act, she at first was all, I didn't hear you this morning, I thought you were sick and needed help. I told her I know that's a lie. Why doesn't she tell me what's really happening? She proceeds to call me every name in the world, telling me how I'm beyond spoiled, a 19-year-old who doesn't know what it's like to work for money. FYI, I'm 30 and I work from home. I've been on my own since 16. I don't understand not working for a living. I've always had to. Anyway, a few hours go by. It's around noon. I'm sitting on my couch reading a book. Suddenly, boom, 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 the sounds of heavy steps up my patio stairs again. She's again standing there with a bucket of tools trying to break in. I told her to leave now or I'm calling the police. More yelling, more name calling. I'm gonna tell your husband everything, just watch. So clearly I told my husband everything. He listened and asked only one question. Why haven't I called the police and the landlord yet? She's either very mentally ill or on whatever substance that's got her this intoxicated that she thinks she can break in and not even get yelled at. I have to stay alone in this house for the next four days while my husband and brother are away. I'm seriously scared. I've put a plank into my sliding door so you literally cannot slide it open. Same with my windows. But if she is this crazy, I don't know what her next move will be. Account 8. Once I was riding my four-wheeler with a friend high up in the mountains. I live in VT. My gas light came on, so we decided to drive straight down and not take the trail. We happened to stop a little ways down. There was a couple of inches of snow on the ground. Somehow we noticed a pair of boot toes sticking up through the snow and then noticed the body. Frantically, we drove the rest of the way down the mountain and called the police. We had to drive them up to where the body was. They uncovered a man who had two guns in his hands and had shot himself. Then they had to strap the frozen body to the side by the side and travel back down. End of story. Account 9. I grew up in ruralish Illinois. But when I was 16, I was house-sitting for my aunt and uncle in the middle of nowhere, Illinois, about an hour and a half away from anyone I knew. Which was dumb of me because I was such an anxious kid. But they were paying me. I had all of the blinds and curtains tightly closed, so I wasn't creeped out by the desolate location corn as far as the eye could see. Around dusk, I was nearly positive I heard the back door jiggle, but convinced myself I had imagined it. I was popping popcorn, so I blamed it on that. An hour or so later, I heard very distinct whimpering outside. At first, I thought it was one of their cats, but then I realized it was more human, childlike. I started peeking through blinds and didn't see anything. At that point, I called my dad to try and get him to come out and stay with me. When I accepted the gig, he warned me that he wouldn't come to my rescue when I got too scared, so he told me I was psyching myself out and that I was safe. It wasn't long, though, before the whimpers turned into actual human cries, and to me it sounded like a little kid. I put on my brave pants and opened the sliding glass door blinds to see that a girl was lying on the patio furniture, crying. I quickly unlocked the door and flung it open, but as soon as she heard me, she jumped up and started banshee screaming while looking me dead in the eye. It turned out that she wasn't a girl. It was a grown but petite woman, maybe in her 50s, just staring at me and screaming at the top of her lungs. Obviously, I slammed the door shut again and locked it and sprinted into the kitchen to call the cops. This was before teenagers had cell phones, so I was relying on the landline. During that call, she began violently banging on the sliding glass door. I decided to hide in a lower kitchen cabinet, LOL dumb hiding spot, in case she got in. It was going to be a bit of a wait because the police station was about 30-ish minutes out. I had about a million anxiety attacks in that time, but after a few minutes, the banging had stopped and it was dead quiet. I also called my dad back and had him on the line while he drove. He was an early adopter of the cell phone, thank goodness, because the 911 operator said they couldn't let me tie up their lines and stay on the call with them until the cops arrived. A very lazy, disinterested police officer finally showed up, did a five-minute sweep of the property before saying there was no threat. Mind you, this was a massive farm operation with half a dozen outbuildings, a few sheds, acres of corn, and endless opportunities to hide. And this man took a single lap around the house, half-heartedly pointing his flashlight around. Luckily, he did agree to stay with me until my dad arrived. My dad showed up and told me to go to sleep, and he sat on the patio with a shotgun until sunrise. 
The next day, my dad and I and his shotgun poked around the property and found evidence that someone had been staying in a storage shed, but no sign of the woman. And there was no sign of the woman ever again after that. If it weren't for her little hidey hole in the shed, I almost feel like people would have thought I imagined it. This experience actually caused a huge falling out between my dad and his sister because they told me they needed me there as a house sitter to feed the cats and keep an eye on the chickens, but it later came out that they had a feeling that somebody had been nosing around their home and that's why they wanted a house sitter. They never found the woman. There was zero evidence that she was doing drugs on the property. That was our initial assumption and she could have been, just nothing to point to that in the shed. She was about four miles from the nearest home and 30 miles from town, a.k.a. a gas station, grocery store, and church, so they were unsure how she even got there in the first place. She absolutely terrified me, and I had literal trauma afterward and couldn't be alone. But I feel horrible for her because I can't begin to imagine the circumstances that led her to that night, and I worry about where she went afterward. Account 10. Man, I finally have something to share. I live in a small neighborhood in Iowa, but in this instance, I was staying at a cousin's house who pretty much lives in the middle of nowhere. Like, the closest neighbor was an hour away. I was around 13 when this happened. It was getting really late. My aunt and uncle had gone to bed, and I was sitting on the porch with my cousin. We were on the back porch, which looks out into the woods after quite a bit of field. The woods were close enough for us to see things walking in and out. So we were watching deer and other various critters moving around and talking about this movie we were excited to see the next day. It got super silent super fast like dead silence. The crickets stopped chirping and even the breeze itself just went away. My cousin grabbed onto my arm and I looked over at her. She was just staring into the trees. So I looked at her. In the trees there was a guy just standing there. It was hard to make out the details of his face but his jacket was all torn up. He was holding something, I think it was a rock or another heavy object, and just staring dead-eyed at us. Naturally, we sprinted back into the house and hid in her bed. The next morning, we decided to go check it out, and there was no sign anyone had been there. The grass wasn't flattened. There were no disturbances in anything around. It's to this day the second creepiest unexplainable event that I've witnessed. Account 11. I smelled something terrible near our barn and started walking around it and found a kitten head surrounded by its body that was all mush and fur. Then I found more spread throughout our barn in the exact same way. It's like one day they were just all suddenly there and it was absolutely heartbreaking. I still have zero idea what happened. And no, they weren't my kittens. I'm used to large dogs, coyotes, and even mountain lions around the ranch. This was not any of them. I was coming home around 2 a.m., and halfway into our valley, this enormous wolf-like creature walked off the side of the mountain into the road next to my car. Its body was pitch black, and its eyes shined white. I stepped on my gas so fucking fast. I've never seen anything like that in my life. Almost shit myself. Account 12. I've seen a ton of weird shit in the NJ Pine Barrens. Most recently, I found a very small fawn's head and foot while mountain biking. I assumed it was a coyote kill at first, but there were no other remains around, and they were positioned together in the center of the trail. I can only imagine that they were placed there on purpose. Account 13. I was sitting on my porch with my rabbit one night when I heard a noise in the woods it sounded big. I thought it might be a bear. It's nearly impossible to get into the woods in my backyard without someone seeing, and I stood up to see, and as soon as I stood up it stopped. I sat down again, and a few seconds later I heard it again. I stood up, it stopped. This happened a couple more times, and I just went in. Another time, me and my mom were in our backyard, and this may sound weird, but it was 3 a.m. when we heard some whispering in the woods. We freaked out and started speed walking to the door, and to get to the door we had to walk all the way around the house, and this whispering noise followed us all the way there. We never saw anything, we just heard the whispering. This all really happened. Account 14. I used to live on 15 acres in the country with my husband and children. We lived at the end of a private gravel road and had a long, winding gravel driveway. Around 10 p.m. I'm getting ready for bed and I hear a car coming down the road. I go get my husband and we both start listening. It sounds like the car stopped, but we start to hear the gravel crunching. Someone is walking up our driveway. We are not expecting anyone and certainly not on foot. 
At this point, we head into the garage, and since it's pitch black outside, we can't see shit. My husband calls out to the person, but they don't respond. The crunching noise is getting louder as the person gets closer. My husband calls out again, and still no response. Just the sound of boots on the rocks. I find our big spotlight, and my husband shines it down the driveway. Finally, the man rounds the corner and comes into view. It was a fucking UPS man delivering a package. Account 15. Here in North Texas, a cryptid known as the Lake Worth Monster, or the Greer Island Goat Man, is said to roam Greer Island and the surrounding area near Lake Worth. Although this story doesn't take place at the lake, it takes place by another close lake. I'm not going to share this specific lake for privacy reasons. Anyways, when we were kids, my cousin, 8M, lived by this lake, my sister, 10F, and I, 12M, as well as his other cousin, 13M, were invited over for the weekend. When we were over, we heard strange noises during the night, similar to an elk bugle. This was the loudest when my uncle drove us through the woodland on the shore. One night when staying up playing Animal Crossing, about 2012, New Leaf had just released, we heard these noises and looked out the window to see a gray, hairy, humanoid figure with horns and hooves standing on his neighbor's roof. Needless to say, this was the most terrified I had ever been. After this, we just hid in his room, closed all windows and blinds, then made a fort so we felt safer. We didn't get our aunt and uncle, though, because he had a baby brother that we did not want to disturb. After all, we thought the crying would attract it. Part 6 Account 1 We live on 5.5 acres in the middle of nowhere. We see shadow people all the time. We ignore them, but it's creepy as hell. Thankfully, we bought a house in town and we are moving in a few weeks. Edit. We see black figures all the time, especially in our home. It's 125 years old, so lots of families have lived here. We ignore them. They are usually in the kitchen because the living room is not part of the original home. My oldest has woken up to a black figure standing in the corner of his room. He will put his earbuds in and close his eyes and ignore it. They have never tried to harm us, but they make it known they are there. We hear knocking on the bathroom door while showering. It's loud and our bathroom is right off the kitchen, but again, we ignore it. Stuff goes missing all the time. We are packing up our house and have yet to find anything that we have lost. Nothing really unusual outside. But sometimes our car lights will go on like someone unlocked the cars, but our keys are hanging up and we go outside and the cars are locked. Just weird random stuff. Account 2. Driving down a remote hill road commonly called the shortcut to the locals, called that because it went straight up a massive set of hills and straight down. It was carved and made by local people to avoid having to go all the way around, which was a solid extra 30 minutes, depending on construction, logging, the local gravel, soil company, etc. Well, this route is about 10 minutes long if you're going the average 50 mph that people usually did, but I felt weird about the road that night. It was about 1 p.m. I was heading home from a long trip I spent with some friends, and I was alone. It didn't feel right. I hadn't taken the route much prior to that, but I was tired and didn't want to waste time getting home. So I'm driving down the road at about 30 manamater per hour, and I notice a slight orange-bronze haze coming just above the nearby trees on my left. I figured it was a car, but the road curved to the right at that place and went straight from there, so there couldn't be any headlights coming from that direction. I slowed down, thinking maybe someone had gone off the road, but I couldn't see the origin of the lights. Deciding it's best not to be the curious, stupid person in budget horror movies who checks something out alone, I just pulled my handgun from my holster and set it on the center console, just in case. I slowed to a stop as I came up to the curve so I wouldn't move away from the lights. That's when I found out the lights were moving, ever so slightly at first, then gained some speed, kind of diagonally towards me, but would have passed me. That's when I saw it peek through the trees, it's hard to describe outside of miniature electrical sun. The best representation I've seen is the electrical anomaly in Metro 2033. Imagine that, but orange and more fiery than electrical. It moved through the trees, and I noticed it would sort of stick an arm out to touch the trees it passed, like a little lightning arm. It would start a little fire whenever it touched something, but seeing as these were all giant live pines, and it was a rather wet area, a valley between two hills, and fires don't start on live wood easily, the fires would go out pretty quickly on their own. 
Then it struck some dead birch trees, and oh boy did those light up quick. This seemed to give it more energy, and it sped up and avoided a couple more trees before smacking straight into a big great oak. It blew up like a grenade and disappeared, and set that side of the oak on fire. I called the fire department because that wasn't going out any time soon. Fast forward a bit, they put it out relatively easily. It hadn't grown much, and they had one of those big off-road brush fire trucks. Police came and questioned me. They thought I started the fire, that I committed arson. Mid-question, a dude from the FD rolls up and says there's lightning scarring on some of the trees and in the dirt, and that it wasn't arson. And the fire followed a specific path that didn't include a lot of dry stuff. After a confusing hour of back and forth, they chalked it down to a destructive event of ball lightning. That remains my only experience with it, and I'm glad I haven't seen it since. That thing is scary. Account 3. No one will ever believe it, but my friends and I encountered a Wendigo while camping on the Appalachian Trail in 1998 or 1999. There were three of us. We were in the tent, all of us asleep when we hear heavy footsteps like a horse, and the air goes from warm and humid to shivering cold. I could see my breath. The tree frogs, crickets, whip poor wills all just stopped making noise. The moonlight cast a shadow of a short, gangly figure about four feet tall walking by the side of the tent. Hoofed feet, skinny arms, long fingers like Freddy Krueger, and what appeared to be small antlers. Its labored breathing was all I could hear until I heard one of my buddies whisper, What the fuck is this? You seeing this shit? The unmistakable stench of roadkill filled the air. Then it started fumbling with the zipper of the tent. After a few seconds, there was a low, guttural growl, almost like frustration. I swear to God, it said, let me in. My buddy grabbed a road flare, lit it, and busted out of the tent, screaming, get the hell out of here. We didn't see anything but movement in the bushes. Then the tree frogs and night jars went back to making their usual racket. The whole rest of the trip, it felt like something was following us. Account four. This is a bit of a long one, and it's about camping. I've mostly lived in cities. Friend and I were on a road trip around the American Southwest. We camp at this isolated state park about 45 minutes away from Zion National Park. Night one, tent pole breaks when we try to set it up. My friend's tent was the kind with the poles already in a sheath on the tent, so you just had to extend them. We drive 45 minutes into town to buy duct tape, come back, and all the poles in our tent have been flipped inside out. There are other people around, but nobody fesses up to messing with it. Some people come and help us with repairs and offer us dinner. I'm a gay man, and my friend is a woman, so I just didn't want to answer questions from anybody in rural Utah. My friend goes to dinner anyway. A person in a different group said he hated foreigners, so I felt uncomfortable being another minority. Spends time with the family's seven-year-old son, tells them she and I are married for some reason. Next day, I'm a wreck, I'm exhausted, and assuming these people are gonna attack us or mess with us more. No proof they did, but the tent situation was so weird. We get back and quickly go to bed, avoiding all of our campsite neighbors. That night I hear sticks breaking near our tent. You can hear the wind howling for a solid minute before it hits our tent each time, and it's a full moon. At about 3 a.m., a pack of coyotes walk through the camping ground, hooting and hollering and howling at the moon. I literally felt like I was going insane, was so tired. The whole thing felt so surreal. Next morning, my friend says she had a nightmare that the family's young son was at our door asking to come in because he was scared. She knows vampire lore and knew something was off, so she didn't invite him in and said his voice got demonic and he was clawing at the door in the tent screaming. She also said that was the most real feeling nightmare she's ever had. Needless to say, the next morning we got up and never looked back. Account five. I was once on a farm sleeping in a camping tent with my best friend. He wakes me up and goes, bro, I have to pee. But we were far from the house, like in the middle of the forest. I say, just pee on the grass or whatever. And he answers, look at the fire pit. We'd made one before going to sleep. I look, and there are two gigantic creepy shadows being projected on the tent. We panic, but we calm each other to sleep. An hour or so later, he wakes me up again and he's crying, saying, bro, I'm gonna die. I can't hold my pee. The shadows are still out there. They're like seven feet tall. Maybe my 12-year-old mind exaggerated that. We cry ourselves to sleep again, but he's almost pissing himself. 20 minutes later, we're awake again because he obviously couldn't hold it. 
The shadows are gone. We get out of the tent and he wants to go to the house to pee. It's a mile away, but he'd already pissed his pants a little, so that gave us a little more time. We walk through this forest with a souvenir flashlight for minutes. Years later, I realize how stupid and lucky we were. There were like six snakes per inch there, but we made it to the house. We are getting close when we look the opposite way. There's a soccer field, and there they were. The same two giant scary shadows wandering around at 3 a.m. Why not? We sprint full speed to the house, enter the bathroom together, and start panicking again. He can't hold the pee. I just turn around and he pees as quietly as possible. He gets up, we hug, he didn't wash his hands to be quiet, pretty gross now I see, and try not to cry. But we hear footsteps outside the house. The door knocks. We are shivering but quiet, not a single word or sound. Who's in there, says the voice outside the door. We hear a key. It's turning the lock, it unlocks the door. We are crying, hugging as hard as we can, praying, and the door opens. It's the homeowner, his uncle. We were so panicked, we forgot he was there. We tell him everything, we cry, we stutter and sob, but we ask him to go outside. He sighs and says, fine. When he opened the door, we got in shock because he looked surprised. The surprised expression slowly turns into a laughing face as he was realizing something. It was really creepy. We ask what's up. He goes, the horses broke the fence and escaped. We go with him, take a look, and there were two horses in front of the house. They were his uncles. We laugh nervously and sleep in the house. Biggest doof in my life. Account six. My parents' old home was in the boonies, but we were in a neighborhood, just the houses were super spaced out. Anyway, my grandmother lived in a little cottage in the back of the land. And about a year before she died, she kept telling us that someone was breaking into her house and moving things. Now she was really damaged with cancer at the time, and my parents figured that was causing her to imagine things. But she kept swearing things were moving when she would come back to the house. Dad checked the house. No sign of forced entry. Nothing. Flash forward two years and my brother moves in. Everything's great, and then his new puppy starts getting really sick. One day he comes home and sees that the puppy is in his kennel, but he threw up and inside his kennel is my brother's high school letterman jacket from his closet. Then, a few days later, a blanket from his bed is across the room. He didn't do it. The dog in the kennel didn't do it. But no forced entry, nothing. Flash forward another year. First brother moves out. Second moves in. Then it really kicks up a notch. Someone moved a photo from his fridge to his sink, reorganized his room, turned his TV around. My brother is a little rough around the edges, so he decides he wants to booby trap the house. That's illegal, so instead, he places a tiny line of flour on the inside of each door walkway. Comes home one day, and there are footprints coming in and out of the house. And one night, we chased a shadowy figure off the land. We changed the locks several times. My dad is a cop, and he said, unfortunately, because nobody has done anything wrong, they can't quite file a report. They eventually installed floodlights and cameras, but I guess whoever was doing it decided no more. It would all be a funny experience if A, they weren't harassing an old sick lady, B, we think they're the reason the dog got sick because he went to another home after and they never had any issues, and C, I don't care who you are, don't break into people's houses. Account 7. I lived out by Lake Tahoe, a beautiful place, but I watched after the house with my dad. I was maybe six at that time, and my dad always tells me there's this part of the house where it goes from 68 to 43, and it was really creepy to him and me, and you could hear walking. Account 8. Not too far into the foothills of California, went for a longish day hike, didn't plan on being gone for more than a couple of hours. I went a little farther than I would usually go. Up higher in the hills, I turned a corner I wouldn't normally turn and found a deer skeleton. Like complete head, spine, ribs, pelvis, and limbs. That wasn't especially disturbing. What I didn't like was seeing the baby deer skeleton next to it. Account 9. There are a couple of times that come to mind. We own about nine acres, and the shape is a little odd. It's kind of long and slanty with a ravine and creek in the middle. The house is at the front half, and the pastures are at the back. So there's a dirt, clay, gravel road through the dense forest. Down the ravine, over the creek, and back up to where the horses are. I usually walk because the more I drive on the road, the more maintenance it needs, and I'm sort of lazy. 
The first creepy experience was when I was walking down to feed the horses, and it was getting close to dusk. I was by myself, but the forest was pretty quiet and peaceful. I sneezed, and in a thicket to my left, something made a similar noise, but it was not human. It was a deeper-pitched, snortier sneeze sound. I didn't like that at all at the time, but I assume now I startled a deer or something. The other time I was walking in the same area with my husband, but it was nighttime. At night it gets super dark being a rural forest, so we had flashlights. As we're walking along and talking, we hear the weirdest noise way up in the tops of the tulip poplars above our heads. It sounded like some strange monkey laughing, but deeper and slower than any monkey I've heard. You could also hear the sound of something big jumping from branch to branch. We tried shining the flashlights up there, but we couldn't see that high in the trees. We left pretty quick and have never heard it again. I tell myself that we startled a flock of wild turkeys, but that was definitely the creepiest experience. Account 10. I grew up on a large farm, 100 acres of farmland and an additional 40 of woods. When I turned 17, I decided I was going to join the military the day after graduation. But I wanted to be prepared. So I started getting up at 4.30 in the morning and running the perimeter of the property. I did this every day from June through mid-October, and I was getting lean and strong and ready. I was getting to the point that I felt like I could do the run twice without exhaustion. On October 17th, all that changed. I started my run at 4.30 like normal. I got to the rear corner of the lot, literally the furthest point from home on my run, and I turned the corner. My right foot came down in a dugout hole. I felt my ankle break and my hip popped in a weird way that makes me want to vomit just thinking about it. I collapsed in a heap, falling on something sharp that cut straight through my sweatpants and into my leg, and my orbital bone hit a rock, knocking me out. I woke up some time later. The only thing I can tell you is that it was still dark. I did a self-inventory, physically touching all my injuries, hip, ankle, cut leg, smash face. My vision in my right eye was blurry, but still good. I quickly assessed that standing wasn't an option. Waiting for someone wasn't an option either because, for reasons, I had never told my parents what I was doing. The only option I had was to crawl. So crawl I did. It was easily 100 yards of crawl through hard, frozen, uneven fields with the remaining stalks of, I want to say, but I'm not sure, corn after harvest. Every inch was excruciating. I was about halfway through the crawl when I saw the coyotes, first one, then two. They kept a good distance, but were clearly curious. I remembered what my grandpa said about wild animals. They don't want to fight, they just want dinner. I couldn't be big, so I decided to be noisy. Every pull forward, I would growl loudly, and this kept them at bay. By the time I got to the driveway, it was fully light. I saw my parents' car was gone. They hadn't even realized I didn't get up and leave for school. I crawled the rest of the way to the house, somehow got the door open, crawled into the kitchen, used the broom to knock the phone down, and called 911. I woke up at least a day later in the hospital. My ankle was held together with a metal plate and screws. My hip had to be surgically placed back in the socket. My face was black and blue, and I have a permanent crease where the stone hit my orbital bone. And my hopes of escaping to the military were gone. Account 11. Stopped at a crossroad in the middle of nowhere to check my phone. Looked up to see someone running towards my car at full speed. I slammed on the gas pedal and saw him still running after me and waving in the rear view mirror, keeping in mind that this was miles away from the nearest town or farm in the middle of some backwoods forest at 3 a.m. in the morning. I guess it's the strangest thing. Account 12. Deer will sometimes follow people through the woods. They stay hidden, but you can hear their feet barely rustling things behind you, keeping pace with you. Humans being slow walkers in animal terms. Eventually, the deer will decide now, make a bit more noise, and step out behind you into whatever path you've been walking and show themselves, becoming very still. They want you to see them at just this distance, far enough that they have time to run if you attack, but close enough for a good look. It's eerie to hear them following. It's sort of like, is there something back there or not? Then when they decide it is time for you to get a look, now you know something is behind you. There's a sense of dread that now you have to turn around and see what it is. It's unnerving the first few times. It is amazing to see a full-grown deer maybe 30 feet behind you, very still, just looking at you, unafraid. 
Ironically, the deer is now controlling the situation, not what you'd expect. You look at the deer, the deer looks at you, and then the deer kind of decides that you aren't worth their time and stalks off into the woods. The first few times this happens, it is creepy as hell. After that, you know what you are most likely hearing, and it's kind of fun. You do have to have good hearing to be aware of it and know when to look back. Some people never hear them and just miss the whole show. It is an interesting instinct that many larger prey animals will follow predators who are not in hunting mode and are moving away from them. It's well documented in several prey species. It may be their way of better identifying individual predators and understanding their movements. Account 13. Grandpa hunting for the Thanksgiving turkey with my dad and uncle when they were both kids. Their dog ran ahead and stopped to bark and call them over. When they caught up to the dog, they found a car at the bottom of a cliff. The car had crashed over the edge, and the guardrail went right through the windshield and into the driver's head. The dog thought the rail looked like a toy and started to pry it out. He succeeded, and the man's brain was on the end of that stick when the dog pulled it free. Account 14. Female co-worker, late 50s, living alone on a farm, goes out to collect the eggs one evening and is walking back to the house with her basket. A man emerges from some tall grass, soaking wet. He holds her up at gunpoint and demands that she give him her truck, keys, and a change of clothes. She agrees and asks him to hold her basket while she unlocks the door. It's already unlocked and there's a baseball bat right behind the door. So she whips it open, grabs the bat, and disarms the man. His instinct not to drop the eggs in the basket saved her. She called the police. He was on the run. Account 15. I lived in rural Colorado. My mother was a teacher at a school 20 minutes away from home. Sometimes I'd help her in the classroom after hours. One night we were heading home after dark. There aren't many lights in general, so it was very easy to see a green orb shoot up into the sky a few miles ahead of us. I would have written it off as a firework had it not zigzagged and shot off in another direction. It was very fast, but the movement really didn't look right. I looked over at my mom after it happened, and she looked surprised and asked me if I saw that. We never really talked about it again. I may ask her if she remembers it when I call tomorrow. Part 7. Account 1. When I was a child, two of my friends and I decided to explore around an abandoned house that was down the road from us. It had the typical abandoned look paint peeling off everywhere, exposed wood, overgrown plants and vines, broken windows, and missing roof tiles. Inside, it matched the outside. Cupboards broken, floorboards splintered and cracked. Other than the place being extremely empty, we didn't really get any scary vibes from it, nothing paranormal as we'd expect. As we left the house, mildly disappointed, we were walking alongside one of the windows when a very well-dressed, well-groomed man in his 60s, wearing a black dress coat, white shirt, and black tie, came into view. We hadn't seen him inside, never heard anything, yet here was this man just staring at us blankly through the window. My friends and I booked it as fast as we ever ran out of there and back home. It probably was just one of the property owners who happened to be inside the same day we were. There were a few rooms we didn't go into, but good God, that scared the shit out of us. A few years later, the local fire department burnt the place down in a controlled burn. So if it was paranormal, well, it's gone now. Account 2. I used to live 30 minutes away from where I am now in the Philippines, and back then, there weren't any convenience stores or supermarkets nearby in my village. It was all grass, trees, and vines, a perfect place to hide mutilated or sacked bodies. One day, my parents and I drove home from my preschool. Suddenly, my dad went silent and told me not to look. Being stupid enough to disobey, I looked and saw someone hanging from the trees by their neck. We later learned that people were killing themselves due to destitution and personal conflicts. Account 3. A rabbit getting killed by a predator makes a terrifying noise. I grew up in the country and, after being shamed for being scared of the dark, I decided to sit in the woods and meditate to get over. I heard this awful sound that scared the shit out of me. I talked to my friends who all hunted and they let me know I had heard a rabbit being killed. I wasn't sure if I should be comforted or horrified. Account 4. Explainable story. When the neighbors kept finding deer dragged into trees and eaten, it started to bother everyone. Neighbor kids, including myself, kept seeing neighbors pulling them out of trees. It seemed very unnatural. Turned out it was a mountain lion. Very surreal. Account 5. 
I used to live in the mountains in northern Alabama growing up. Our house was on the edge of the woods with a paved road leading back to the city limits, which was a good hour and a half away. One night, my brother and I woke up to stomp. We ran outside to our front porch, and all three of our horses were running in circles around our house at high speed. Normally, these three were the kindest, most gentle of giants, and were pretty old, so they never really got like this unless they were playing. They were frothing at the mouth. Their eyes seemed to be clouded over, and from them, running in circles, their hooves dug into the ground so much that it left a permanent scar where the grass never grew back. My brother and I woke up our dad, and he ran outside. While my brother and he chased after the horses, I went behind the house with a flashlight to make sure their gate hadn't fallen over or they hadn't knocked it off its hinge. I held the flashlight in my mouth while pulling the gate open, and when I turned my head to look into the pasture, the beam of light caught on the top of antlers. What had looked like a deer at the entrance to the thicket of the forest had no eyes. It was all black and sunken, and it stood up with gaunt proportions of its limbs which were way too long to be a regular deer. It used its front legs like arms and pushed branches aside before disappearing. This glance only lasted moments, but the feeling I get when I think about it makes my stomach churn and my heart almost burst. I was only 14 then, 28 now, so I like to think it was just my brain tricking me since my adrenaline was going. But I don't think I can just describe the dread that fills me just thinking about how this thing looked. Never had another encounter like it, thank God. Account 6. My husband and I decided to take our then two-year-old and newborn up to a popular picnic spot about an hour from our house. It was a rainy and dreary day, but we all just wanted to get out of the house for a while. The drive was nice despite the weather and the babies were sleeping in the back, all was well. As we drove into the park, we saw a few workers doing cleanup, and every one of them stopped and stared at us as we drove by. No smiles or polite waves, just eerie staring. When we pulled up at the restroom for my husband to use, I got this horrible sense of dread. I didn't mention it, but I told my husband we'd just wait in the car and figure out what to do when he got back. He told me to lock the doors after him, and he'd only be a minute. All the nearby workers were still stopped and staring at us in the car. All the hairs on my arms were standing up and internal alarm bells were ringing. The workers started edging their way down the slope towards us, slowly but surely. My husband got back and said this place was giving him the creeps. And we left. Thankfully, nothing came of it. But when we were recounting the weirdness to some friends, they told us about some alleged wild panther sightings there. This was in rural Australia. What the heck is a panther doing there? Either way, screw that place, those workers, and trying to pretend not to be terrified when you've just given birth. Account 7. I live in Ireland where there are a lot of stray cats that farmers let roam around to control the local rat population. Recently, they've started coming further into the village, and now, every night, it sounds like someone's climbing around outside my window. The first time I heard it was at 2 South a.m. They were tapping on the window and everything, trying to get in. Keep in mind they weren't meowing or making cat noises. It was just one cat walking around on my roof and tapping the window that leads to my room. It was terrifying. I legitimately thought it was a person. Account 8. I used to live in rural Tennessee for a while. My house was at the end of a two-mile-long driveway, and my closest neighbor was halfway down that driveway. We weren't close, but we helped each other out here and there when needed. One night, around 11 p.m., I heard someone driving up the driveway. Nobody lived past me, and I had no clue who it could be. I walked over to my front windows and looked outside. Some dude in an SUV was parked in front of my porch. He saw me in the window, waved, then got out and came up to talk to me. I opened my front door, locked the screen, and asked what he needed. He said something about looking for his dog, so I asked who he was and where he lived. This dude looked me in the face and said, Oh, I live just past you there, and pointed to the densely packed trees surrounding my house. I told him I hadn't seen his dog and apologized for it. He said, Okay, whatever. His tracker just led me here, so I figured you would have seen him. I had not seen his dog that apparently had a tracker on it. He turned around and walked back to his car. I watched him until he drove far enough away that I couldn't hear his tires anymore. The next day, my neighbors came over to collect trash for me. They owned a dump truck and saved me the 40-minute drive to town a lot. And they asked me if some dude came to my property last night. 
I said yeah, and they asked if I knew him. I said no. Apparently this dude told my neighbors that he lived at the top of the hill across town. The only thing is, that hill had one house, and it was destroyed by a tornado about four years prior. He used the same excuse about his dog, but said it was in their yard. My neighbor had no clue how they got into their yard because, similarly to me, they had a gated yard. I never usually shut mine because it got stuck when you latched it, but my neighbors always had theirs latched, along with a no trespassing or I'll shoot sign. Needless to say, I kept my gate latched and bought a master lock for it after that. I moved about four months after that incident. Crane here. Account 9. When I was growing up, I lived in a neighborhood across from a giant cemetery. I spent many nights drinking and smoking weed in that graveyard. Since the cemetery hadn't had anyone buried in it for over 50 years and the city maintained it, no one ever visited. One night, I was doing my normal thing drinking, smoking, and playing on my phone when I heard someone say, Do you like hanging out with the dead young man? I turned around and saw a black man in his 60s wearing jeans a checkered flannel shirt, and a gold cross necklace. I replied, Yeah, I do, actually. They don't talk much. He said, You'd be surprised how often they do. Then he asked my name. I told him and asked his name. He said, I'm Pastor Troy. My wife is buried here, and I'd like to see her. I asked if he'd like his privacy, and he said, I'm actually leaving. You have a good night, young man, and walked away. When I went home and told my mom that I met a guy named Pastor Troy, she looked at me really strange and said, Are you sure? Pastor Troy died a couple of years before you were born, son. Listen. She asked me what he looked like, and after I described him, she said that I was really freaking her out, because I described the man she knew was dead perfectly. It freaked me out for a while. Count 10. My friend and I were driving across a rural stretch of highway with very little traffic at night. We were having an involved conversation while he drove. Suddenly, I saw something extremely large looming in the distance right in the middle of the road. It was too dark to make out, but it looked like a huge boulder or a round object at least 10 feet high and just as wide. I screamed and pointed at it. My friend hit the brakes and swerved hard around it, thankfully missing it. No other cars were around, and as it was a one-way road, we couldn't turn around to investigate. My first thought was a giant boulder, but we were in flat desert, nowhere near mountains or hills. We called the cops to let them know, but about shit our pants. Account 11. I'm female and was about 15, home alone. I had just gotten out of the shower and put on a dress. I heard someone knocking, so I answered the door with my hair still in a towel but peeked around the door so you couldn't tell I was in a dress. It was my landlord and his 30-something-year-old son. They were trying to talk me into letting them into the house. I said, come back later and shut the doors. They knew my parents weren't home as there was no car in the driveway. I never found out what they wanted, and they told my parents they never knocked on the door. Account 12. I haven't had anything creepy happen per se, but road rage can be terrible out here. I was once followed and threatened with assault by a guy who cussed me out, claiming his kids were in the car with him with the windows cracked so they heard everything. Thankfully, I knew he was following me and dove into a public space to deal with this guy rather than at my house. This was a few weeks back, and I am still paranoid about people following me. I reported this guy to the people who owned the public space where I stopped and wrote down his plates, holding on to them for a week. Part of me hopes he is okay and is past it. I got a sense he might have been a little buzzed or had heightened emotions, but still. Account 13. I was driving down a windy country road around 4 a.m. in the middle of nowhere to my favorite hunting spot. A bit groggy, my buddy and I came around the next bend and noticed a large bright light in the distance. As we got closer, we realized it was a large fire, and someone must have been burning wood. We continued driving and began to slow down as we approached. Two people were waving us down in the middle of the street. We rolled down our windows to hear blood-curdling screams and cries for help. We looked over and could see the fire clearly now. An old pickup truck had run off the road and smashed into a tree. The entire cab was engulfed in 12-foot-high flames. One of the bystanders screamed, There's someone in there! I could see the silhouette of a person in the driver's seat, surrounded by smoke and fire, being burned alive. 
The flames were too large for us to offer any help to the person. To this day, the haunting images are burned into my mind, and the sound of the cries for help is something I will never forget. It's by far the scariest thing I have ever witnessed. Account 14. Really not that scary, but I'll share. We have 86 acres in the middle of nowhere. We were driving back to the land and saw a raggedy-looking owl sitting on the power line pole by our driveway. It was molting or something, so it was very hard to distinguish any markings to figure out what kind of owl it might be. We greeted it hello and went along our way, guessing what kind it might be. The next day, my husband had to return home, but I was staying on the land to meet a friend and set him up to camp for a few weeks. So, I'm there alone in the middle of nowhere for the first time since we purchased the land. I settle down on our makeshift latrine and then Scree. Scree starts somewhere behind me. My sphincter has never reversed operation so quickly. Moments later, once my heart resumed beating, I took a deep breath and texted, Verified Screech Owl to Hubby. Then I laughed at myself and continued on my day. Account 15. Okay, so this happened to my boyfriend, 24M and me, 27F, about two years ago in the middle of the night. I decided to post it because it haunts me to this very day, and I still have nightmares about it. It was about 2 a.m. one night in September. We live about 25 minutes out of town in northern British Columbia, Canada, and our house is surrounded by the woods. Because it's such a dead road, usually we would pull out of the driveway and then turn on our lights. Why? I don't know, weird habit. We both would do it, LMAO, not anymore. Lights on immediately. So I'm driving. I pull out to go left down the road and turn on the high beams. Then we see it. In the road is this weird, hairless, pale, humanoid creature crouching in the middle of the road. It almost seemed to be glowing. But that was probably because it was such a pale white and I hadn't turned off my high beams. It whipped its head at us as if it was surprised by our lights turning on. After a second, it shambles across the rest of the road in jerky movements and down into the ditch, which was about three feet deep. But that's not it. We both watched as it went down into the ditch, turned around to face us, and it stood up on its back legs exactly like a human, but not quite. Except it stood over five feet higher than the ditch taller than our car at the time. And remember, the ditch is already three feet deep, so this creature was over seven feet tall. It looked aggressive, hunched at the shoulders and leaning forward slightly as if to look at the car. And I swear I made eye contact with it. No, it was not watching us drive by. It wasn't looking at the car. It was looking through the window, and it was looking right at me. Whatever it was, it was intelligent and knew that the car wasn't moving itself. It knew we were inside. I drove so slowly, turning my head and keeping eye contact with it as we drove past, and I did the same, craning its neck to watch me leave. My boyfriend couldn't see it past me at that point. Eventually, it was out of my vision, and I looked back at the road. We were both completely silent. I was driving less than 10 km h hour, having taken my foot off the gas when I saw something in the road. To this day, I don't really tell people because the people I tell just laugh it off or try to explain it as an albino starving bear or something. This year, his parents were visiting just before winter hit. They have a dog. Me and his mom were having a smoke on the deck, which is about six feet off the ground. It's dusk, not much light. We were on the left side of the deck. The same side we turn on the road to go to town. You can see the patch of woods where the creature would have been before, so this instance happened in the same little area. I hear a bunch of cracking twigs just as the dog goes nuts. He is a small boy, so we were surprised when he almost jumped off the deck to run in the woods. My boyfriend comes out just in time, and we see just beyond some trees, so it's obscured. A tall, lanky, white form. But we couldn't see anything else definitive, and his mom has terrible eyesight and didn't have glasses. I know it was the same creature. I got this twisting feeling in my gut. I decided to share on this subreddit because, if anything, at least some people will believe me. We don't leave our house at night. Maybe it's weird, but I want to see it again. There's such a huge difference, man. I used to think, wow, these stories are cool. I so believe in them. It was nothing compared to the awed terror I felt when I made eye contact with something I'm positive is not natural. Account 16. I was visiting a friend in rural Ohio. He and my husband had stepped inside the house, but the dogs and I were still outside enjoying the summer night, waiting for them to come back out. All of a sudden, both my little corgis start growling and backing up toward our van, something they've never done. 
Usually they don't retreat if they're growling. They run up and inspect the thing they're wary of from a bit of a distance. But this time they were backing up. Then one of them runs under our van. Then the other. Neither has ever done this. I'm still staring off into the dark, trying to figure out what they're worked up about. But it's too dark all the way across the yard, and I can't see anything at all, just the general direction they're focused on. Not even a vague size or shape of something moving. So I opened up our van and coaxed the dogs out enough that they could jump in. They didn't even want to come out that far. And then we all sat in the van until they stopped growling. But I never did see what they were worked up about, and I've never seen them behave like that again. 